from KPAX and MTN Sports. This is Grizzly Gridiron Classics. 2009 was another banner year for the Montana Grizzlies, but once again UM was tested by Eastern Washington during the regular season. In a matchup between two ranked opponents, the Grizz and Eagles battled it out in a classic, one that UM pulled out in the end thanks to some late game heroics from some Grizzly legends. The first quarter from Montana's game against Eastern Washington in 2009 begins after this. It's time for kickoff on Grizzly Gridiron Classics. Welcome to this exclusive presentation of Big Sky Conference Football on Montana's news station. Last week, the Grizzlies used a fourth quarter comeback to beat 15th ranked Cal Poly and remain undefeated on the year. This week, 21st ranked Eastern Washington comes to Missoula with first place in the Big Sky Conference on the line. Another FCS Top 25 matchup from Washington Grizzly Stadium coming up next. Montana's news station. This is College Football Saturday. For the second straight week, Washington Grizzly Stadium, the site of a top 25 matchup in the football championship subdivision as third ranked Montana gets ready to host 21st ranked Eastern Washington with first place in the Big Sky Conference on the line here today. Hello everyone, Phil Buck, John Edwards on hand to call today's game and John, we'll get to see a couple balanced offenses on the field today, but two players in particular to keep an eye on will be the running backs and for Eastern Washington, the super sophomore having a breakout season is Taiwan Jones. Yeah, he's scoring almost every time he touches the ball. Pretty amazing. Going to be fun to watch. Both defenses are kind of bend, don't break defenses. So look for a lot of yards. Who, who knows how many points? That's what's going to be interesting to see what defense can keep him out of the end zone. Jones this year so far leading the conference in scoring and in rushing. And on the other side, the junior Chase Reynolds, he played eight-man football in high school. And his numbers since taking over last year look like eight-man numbers here in college. Yeah, that's what's amazing about him. And that's what you love to watch as a runner. He's a downhill runner, always gets positive yards, really hard runner, hard worker, fun to watch. It should be a test for both teams. Also could be in for an exciting game. Eight of the last recent meetings between these two teams have been decided by 10 points or less. The last two times the Eagles have played here in Washington Grizzly Stadium. They won in 2005. Very close game the last time they played here in 2007. So it'll be exciting to see what happens here today. Yeah, you know, Montana, they have the chance. They have the reins in the Big Sky conference this is their opportunity to lose those reins and it'll be a great contest eastern washington always a tough team going to be a fun game right you are first place in the league on the line here today over washington grizzly stadium kickoff between the eagles and grizzlies coming up next well after after winter made a cameo appearance last week here in Missoula, fall has returned, as has the nice weather. Near 65 degrees here in time for kickoff, again between a top 25 matchup here in the football championship subdivision. Third ranked Montana getting set to take on 21st ranked Eastern Washington. Big Sky Conference first place on the line here today, John. And these are two teams that are both looking for improved performances off of last week. The Grizzlies were able to pull out a come from behind win against Cal Poly. Meanwhile, the Eagles lost at home to uh, Weber State. Both the Eagles and the Grizzlies last week turned the ball over five times. They'll be looking to uh, cut down on the turnovers this week. Yeah, absolutely. That's what killed them. And uh, it's such a tight big sky race so far. A lot of teams with one loss, Montana with none. Eastern Washington knows that they've knocked off Montana. They're going to get back in the ball game and we'll figure out what happens at the end of the year. But they need to stick with that one loss. So they're going to come out, try to correct those mistakes. Obvious Montana the pressure's on. You better show up and see what you can do. So it's going to be a fun game. It's a, a beautiful Saturday in the middle of fall, middle of October, and uh, football's in the air and look for a great game. 
Well, head coach Bo Baldwin in his second year at the helm here at Eastern Washington came here after spending one year as head coach at Central Washington University. That was his only head coaching experience prior to coming to Easter. As we see, Eastern Washington has won the coin flip and has elected to receive, so the Eagles will get the ball to start the game. And the Grizzlies we've seen in, a, in quite a few games this year have, have gotten slow starts to the games. I mean, they've come back obviously 5-0 and on the year, so they've been able to come out and pull the wins out in the second half. But they've had problems in the first half, especially last week. I mean, they were dominated by Cal Poly here through the opening two quarters. They, they managed just a handful of rush yards, just 14 rushing yards in the opening quarter, and they only had the ball for seven minutes and change. Yeah, arguably, this is the best team that Montana's gonna face, so they better show up from the beginning. That will come back to bite you no matter what. As a football team, you can get away with it. Recognize Montana's a good, experienced team who knows how to win in sticky situations, but I tell you what, Eastern Washington will have something to say about that today, so they better come out and play from the beginning, because you do it against a good team you're going to put yourself so far back you don't have an opportunity to come back in the second half as the third ranked grizzlies take the field here at washington grizzly stadium in front of nearly 25,000 fans talked in the open, John, about Taiwan Jones, the sophomore running back, having a breakout year for Eastern Washington. Well, the guy that leads this offense and really makes it go is the quarterback, Matt Nichols. He's a senior. He's a Walter Payton Award candidate. Last week, he broke the school record for career passing yards, that record previously held by Eric Meyer, and this week will break the school record for career total yards. This is a guy that makes this offense go in every way. He's their leader, and, and they really look to him and have leaned on him in many situations. Yeah, you know, going back to it, Eastern Washington, uh, since the early 2000s, uh, even to the late 90s, have really been a strong team, and they've had some really fantastic players. Back when 2001, the year that that uh, my team won the national championship. We had an overtime game here that was absolutely phenomenal. And uh, then in 2002, we went over there and they beat us. And uh, you know, it's very solid, solid team, solid players. They have a very strong program and, and committed to their program. So it's a fun rivalry. It's a great rivalry. And uh, they're going to lean on Nichols for sure today. They have to. And uh, they've got a very balanced attack. Get the ball out to the wideouts. Use their running backs. And uh, like you say, I mean, they're scoring every time he touches the ball almost. Uh, and uh, it's, it's going to be a great game. Ready to get things started here in Missoula. Brody McNutt set to kick off for the Grizzlies. And we are underway from Missoula. Short kick taken at the 20-yard line and returned out just across the 30. So good field position for the Eagles to start this ball game. And we talked about Nichols, you know, John, his best career game came right here on this very field two years ago in 2007. He threw for 451 yards and two touchdowns. A lot of those were to Aaron Boyce. In that game, Boyce, 17 catches, 238 yards and a touchdown. He's the senior wide out and we'll have to watch for him. Yeah, you know, turnovers, you mentioned it here a minute ago. This game's going to be decided on turnovers. Eastern Washington turns the ball over like they did last week. It's going to be a long day. Eastern starts out through the air. It's a toss to Tony Davis, the senior out of Olympia, Washington. Davis picks up about seven on first down. Really good start. Safe play. Just It's almost a, a lateral or, or some kind of outside pitch. Very safe, very confident throw. Get him into a rhythm. Get him moving into a crowd like this and get the crowd quieted down. Brings up a second and three. Nichols to work out of the shotgun. Stands in the pocket, dumps it off and picking up a first down and a lot more is Davis once again. 
Davis comes into this game with 34 catches. That leads the team as we get a look at our defensive starters for the Eagles, brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management, your benefits at work, or pardon me, defensive starters for the Grizzlies. And Shan Schillinger, the senior at safety, had the big interception at Northern Arizona to get the win in overtime a couple weeks back. First and 10 now. And the inside handoff is broken wide open. It's Taiwan Jones into the secondary and stopped at the Montana 33. You know, great job there. I Look at what they're doing, Eastern Washington coming out really early and trying to uh, solidify a solid, quiet game plan that gives them some positive yards. Montana, it's going to be interesting to see if Montana does this all day, playing a very basic 4-2 cover four. Four down linemen, two linebackers in the box. Eastern Washington spread it out. You got a great shot of it here. Got a 41. You got one linebacker in the spot. They got the field spread so wide. It'll be interesting to see if Montana does this all day or put some pressure on. You talk about pressure. Here it comes from Austin Mullins, the senior out of Great Falls with the sack, his first of the year. Yeah, you know, Austin Mullins, that's the pressure they're going to have. If they're not going to blitz, you better hope and you better pray that Austin Mullins and those interior D linemen are going to get some pressure because that's the only way you're going to get it if you're not blitzing. So look, that's a big matchup today. If we, everything stays the way it is right now, a big battle up front and who can get pressure and if the old lineman can keep pressure off. Another inside handoff. And that's Daryl Beaumont down to the 30. Back across the original line of scrimmage, that makes it third and seven. Beautiful, beautiful example of it there, Phil. Montana rolled safety, stole into the box there at the last minute. Obviously, Coach Paulson knew that that was a running down situation from their tendencies, rolled the safety down. He was in there to make the play, did make the play. Big, loud third down here. Important start for the Eagles. Montana brings pressure. Nichols hangs on, looks end zone, and the flag comes in. In the area of pass interference, Nichols was looking for Nicholas Edwards, the red shirt freshman on the outside. And we will check the penalty here. Get the first call from today's head referee. Pass interference on the defense. Number 21, 15 yards to the previous spot. Automatic first down. And it will indeed be the pass interference call against Keith Thompson, and that sets up the Eagles with a first and 10 from the Montana 15. What you're going to see there, Phil, is the fact that Thompson didn't turn his head around. Ball was thrown, he was fighting, it was hands on, they were battling down the sidelines. You got to get your eyes around and look at the ball. If not, you're going to get P.I. called on you every time. Here is Jones. Gets about two yards before he's stopped by Brandon Fisher and Eric Stoll. Brings up second and about eight. Boy, what a very impressive drive by Eastern Washington to come out in the beginning. They're running a fairly quick offense. You know, notice they haven't been huddling. Uh, they're huddling now, but they have been huddling the majority of this drive, keeping Montana's defense off balance a little bit, make it a little tough for Paulson, Coach Paulson, to make blitz calls and this and that and keep them on their heels. Done a successful job of managing that from that perspective today. Really nice job by Eastern Washington. Empty backfield for Nichols out of the shotgun on second and eight. Has time, gets rid of it over the middle, caught and in for the touchdown. Nathan Overbay, the senior tight end, his fifth touchdown of the year, and the Eagles get on the board first. Very, very impressive first drive for Eastern Washington. That I mean, that's how you come in and take this crowd out of this game. A very controlled, well-called first drive like that, mixing it up back and forth with the, the pass and the run. Again, notice what was most important there, no pressure. You get all day to sit back like this with the numbers that these guys have been putting up. That's going to be, you're going to see a lot of it. That's going to be pretty consistent throughout the day. Extra point up and good, and the Eagles get out to the fast start. They have a 7-0 lead early here in Missoula. So the Eastern Washington Eagles
come out on their opening possession and march right down the field and punch it in. There's your MontanaGrizzlies.com score drive. Seven plays, 70 yards in under four minutes, capped off by the Overbay touchdown from 13 yards out. And of course, for news and stats on all Grizzly athletics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Here's the kick taken by Peter Wynn inside the five yard line by Montana. Bounces it at the 20 and stood up just short of the 30 yard line which is where the Grizzly offense will take over. Well, that over bay is a load, boy. I can tell you that right now. He is a big boy, works pretty well in the open field. And uh, this is a big play. I mean, what a, what a start for Eastern Washington. Montana, you better come out and answer. This is exactly what you and I talked about at the beginning of the game, Phil. If you come out and stub your toe like Montana notoriously has done all year, you're going to find yourself behind the eight ball with a real solid football team. Well, there you saw Andrew Sell's numbers. Sell, your starting quarterback, brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. Your benefits at work. And has Steve Failer, the tight end, over the middle, a 20-yard pickup on first down, stopped at midfield. So get a look at the rest of the offensive starters for the Grizzlies. Again, brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management. And there's a penalty flag down just short of midfield. Well, I tell you what uh, that call is going to be. That's the fact when he caught that ball, he got up and signaled first down. They're going to take him back. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 88 on the offense. 15 yards to the end of the run. They know the rules. Uh, you know, that's something you just don't do. Fantastic catch, great throw, really st strong uh, pocket presence by Sell. Just don't make a mistake like that. Pop up, go back to the huddle and get to work. That sets up a first and 10 now as Chase Reynolds gets the handoff, stood up at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Again, Reynolds, the junior out of Drummond, Montana. As we get a look at our defensive starters for the Eagles, again brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management, your benefits at work. David Miles getting the start at defensive tackle this week, the converted tight end. And then you see J.C. Sherritt at linebacker, number four. How many times will we call his name today? Sherritt leads the conference. He's ranked third in the nation in tackles as Reynolds up the middle gets eight yards on second down. Again, your defensive starters brought to you by Allegiance Benefit Plan Management, your benefits at work. Talk about Sell. He has had a good season so far. Comes into this game having completed 68% of his passes. He's thrown 10 touchdowns, just one interception. He's ranked fifth in the country in passer efficiency rating. He's a, rated at 167.58, if that means anything to you there, John. Well, that's just unbelievable consistent play. That's what that's all about. Reynolds tries to string this run out, and he stood up for no gain. Tyler Washburn, the freshman linebacker, comes up to make the stop short of the first down marker, and Montana will be forced to punt. It's a big stop right there by Eastern Washington. Well done of spreading that thing to the sidelines. That sidelines is, is a friend of yours when you're the defense like that. You got a guy like Reynolds running to it, pushing to it, and that's what they did. Nice job of keeping, uh, keeping him third and short out of it. Punt fair caught by Tony Davis at the 22. That's where the Eagles will take over. Welcome back to Missoula, where Eastern Washington leads third-ranked Montana 7-0 here early in the first quarter. Phil Buck, John Edwards, and Derek Berkeley on hand as Taiwan Jones gets the carry and picks up four on first down. And we've talked about Jones. I mean, he leads the conference in rushing and scoring and really has had his breakout season just this year. He moved from cornerback to running back back in spring camp of this year. Last year, he started four games at cornerback. He missed most of the early season with a broken fibula that he suffered during the first week of fall camp. But in those games that he played in late in the season, what production. He had 15 tackles in one game, 
two blocked kicks over the course of that period and a 93-yard kickoff return. Taken back for a touchdown against Northern Colorado as Keith Thompson makes the play for Montana. Really good play there by Keith Thompson. Very important in the way that Eastern Washington spreading this field out that you make those initial tackles out in the field. You miss that, that's going to be a first down. And that's going to be the test all afternoon. When they got this field spread so wide, you're going to be on islands out there, one-on-one. -on -one. Got to be a sure tackler. Very nice form. Put the arms around it and driven to the ground. Got to be able to do that. Loss of three on the catch by Edwards. Brings up a third and nine. Nichols buying himself some time and is sacked. Tyler Hobbs, the junior out of Spokane, comes up to make his second sack of the year, and the Eagles will give the ball back. That, like I, like I need to tell you, pretty important stop there. Backed up, slow things down for Montana. That was an important possession for Eastern Washington as well. They started off with uh, a quick four yards on first down. They would have loved to pick up a first down, at least from a field uh, position standpoint. But the sack brings up a fourth and long. Going to switch the, the field position game on them right here. And the punt. And the snap over the head of the punter, Cameron Zuber. It goes out of the back of the end zone for a safety. Devastating mistakes. We talked about it at the beginning, Phil. If you if you don't if they turn the ball over like they did last week against Weaver, gonna be a tough day. This this essentially is a turnover and a half. You give you throw Montana two points. Now you gotta go back and kick the ball to him. So it's a mistakes like that. I know that Eastern Washington's gonna really try to clean that up from a perspective. Uh, of the rest of this game because you just can't give away easy ones like that, and that's what they are. So Montana gets on the board with the safety, and the Grizzlies will get the ball back. We mentioned the third member of our broadcast team, Derek Berkeley, roaming the sidelines today. A bit of a different story this week down there than it was last week, Derek. Uh, the weather a little bit nicer today. Well, that's right, Phil. Last week we were dealing with temperatures that felt like they were in the teens with wind chill. Today on the field, it's going to feel like 70 degrees. Perfect weather for some fall football. Now, talking about the Eastern Washington offense, they've been high-powered and played well for a long time. But Coach Bobby Howe thinks this is the best they've ever been because of Taiwan Jones giving up that fast electric back in the backfield to go along with all the great receivers and quarterbacks that they've had years and years now. So we'll really see how the Grizz defense plays against what could be the best offense Eastern Washington has ever had, guys. Thank you, Derek. Montana's defense ranked fifth in the nation against the run. Here's the kick taken by Peter Wynn and returned out to the 30-yard line. No, you're absolutely right, Derek. That's saying something, too, when you're talking about Eastern Washington offenses. They have been high-powered and high-polluting for a lot of years. And to make that comment with what they have here, obviously, as we saw in that first drive, they have extreme potential, and when they're hitting on all cylinders are, are deadly. But, boy, mental mistakes like that keep your offense off the field. And make Montana earn it this time rather than giving them points. Chase Reynolds picking his way through the line of scrimmage on first down. About a four-yard gain. Stopped just short of the 35-yard line. Coach Fennessy appears steadfast on the fact that he's going to run the ball today. It's uh, There haven't been any big holes, big pops. Eastern's defensive line doing a nice job of clogging up that middle and making Reynolds kind of pick and choose. That's not the best kind of runner he is. He likes to get downhill in a hurry and hit the hole. So they're going to stay with it. Mariani, the receiver in motion before the snap. Sell. Looking over the middle, intended for Tyler Palmer. It's ruled incomplete. Brings up about a third and six for the Grizzlies. Makai Borden, the senior linebacker, was there in pass coverage for Eastern. You can kind of see they were confused there where Palmer was supposed to stay, whether he was supposed to clear that route out or sit in that little hole. You could see it was passing by your screen pretty fast there. Clearly sell and he were not on the same page. Sell out of the shotgun on third down. 
unloads, again intended for Palmer. And once again, it's ruled incomplete. The crowd looking for a flag as they thought there was contact before the ball got there. And Andrew Sell still down on the field after the play. Now you can, you'll see here what the crowd was looking at. Looks like a little early contact there. We don't get to see exactly what happened to Sell. We did see him take a shot just as got rid of the ball. Grizzly training staff taking a look at him. And boy, talk about the training staff. I mean, a crucial, crucial members to any football team. I mean, the way they keep these players healthy during the week and the way they care for them on the field in, in any situation like this, any kind of stoppage, I mean, well, nice to see him pop up there. Well, you're absolutely right, Phil, and I can't speak for Eastern Washington for the simple fact I'm not familiar with their program as, as, as far as those kind of intimate details go, but I, knowing being around here for a lot of years, J.C. Weida, the, the head trainer in charge of the football program, does a really good job of working with the coaches and the players and keeping everybody healthy. It's a tough job. It's a very difficult job. He does, he does it very nicely. Dennis Murphy and Tim McEwen on that training staff as well for Montana. Here's Sean Wren's punt, takes an eastern bounce and will be downed just inside the 30-yard line. A punt of 36 yards. Eastern has the ball in the lead when we come back. We'd like to expend a special hello to everyone watching on our affiliate KHQ in Spokane. Welcome into Montana. Missoula where the Grizzlies trade e trail Eastern Washington 7-2. Matt Nichols scrambling and brought down by Ryan Featherston. No gain on first down. Nice job by Featherston there staying in his position. You can see Montana obviously deciding to blitz a little bit more. You see that? That's his responsibility. Stay on that end. Don't lose contain. He almost lost contain but made up with it with a shoestring tackle there. Nice job. Nichols perfect so far on the day. Four for four for 28 yards and a touchdown. He has already this afternoon broken Eastern Washington school career record for career total yardage. And there's Taiwan Jones and that explosive playability that we heard about all week long. Close to 20 yards and a first down for the Eagles. Twice now that they've run that successfully. Just kind of a little delayed draw. Got defense thinking pass. Really nice job by Nichols selling that. Just as silly as that sounds, getting that ball up by your shoulder buys you a second or half a second. That's all you need. And here's a play fake, and Aaron Boyce comes wide open over the top, breaks a tackle, and stopped at the 26. Great play call by the Eagles, and once again, Eastern Washington moving the ball very well. Yeah, absolutely. You're right on with the play call there. Nice double fake there. Very nice. Nichols tall, composed in the pocket. Watch the field. Delivers a strike. Look at that. Perfect. Really well done there. Good call by uh, Eastern Washington coaching staff and well executed by everybody on the Eagles offense. Nichols to Boyce has been quite the combination for Eastern Washington over the past four years. First and 10 from the Montana 26. Dariel Beaumont picks up four and a late flag comes in on the end of the play. Oh, you're gonna see Schillinger disappointed with himself there. Again, Montana playing a very basic cover four. That's splitting the field in quarters. Your corner, two safeties and corner, each have a responsibility for a quarter of that field. In run pursuit, he's got that. He lucks out there, but he's got that lane and he missed a tackle there. You could see him frustrated after the play. Montana gets a break here with the holding penalty. Yeah, either way, this play will come back as Eastern flagged for the hold. Their first interaction of the ball. On the offense, number nine. Ten yards to score the foul. Repeat first down. And it'll be Boyce flagged for the penalty. See Bo Baldwin in his second season coached quarterbacks and was the offensive coordinator here at Eastern Washington from 2003 to 2006. First and 18 now after the penalty. 
dumps it off for Jones, able to break one tackle, but not much after that. Very little gain, if any. <clears throat> really nice job by Chase Palmer. They're recognizing what was going on. They tried to set up a little screen play here. And Chase did a really, really nice job. So you can see, kind of see how those old linemen let you slide. He recognized that, filtered down the line, and made the tackle. Lost one on the pass to Jones. Sets up second and 19 now. There's a good shot of that basic defense on your screen right now. One linebacker in the middle, very easy cover four. Nichols gets rid of it quickly, batted at the line of scrimmage. It falls incomplete. The intended receiver was Overbay, the tight end. Overbay with the touchdown to open the game. Funnily enough, he's the nephew of Lyle Overbay, who plays for the Toronto Blue Jays in Major League Baseball. Got his professional start right here in Missoula. Lyle Overbay played for the 1999 Missoula Osprey. He was the league MVP that year and led the team to the Pioneer League Championship in their first year of existence. Good tidbit, Phil. That's fantastic. Third and very long, and Nichols trying to make up for it with his feet. Gets it back across the original line of scrimmage. A good gain. About 14 yards, but it'll still be short of the first down. And out comes Mike Jarrett to attempt the field goal. Smart play there by Nichols, recognizing that you don't have something downfield. Don't try to force it and turn the ball over. Tuck it, protect it. Picked up 12 yards, makes this a lot easier kick than it would have been. Mike Jarrett lines up for what would be a 39-yard field goal. Kick up and good. Solid response after the mistake that Eastern made on the opposite end of the field with the bad snap. Really solid drive, picking up three points. Fans coming up at the half. Derek Berkeley will talk with the president and CEO of St. Patrick Hospital, Jeff Fee, about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we'll also talk with Grizz Soccer head coach, Neil Sedgwick. Of course, we'll have the first half highlights and stats, all brought to you by the bookstore at the University of Montana, your Grizzly logo wear source since 1921. As you see, Eastern Washington now with a 10-2 lead, under three minutes to play here in the opening quarter. And once again, that Montana offense sort of is a little sluggish to yep. get things started. Yep, you're absolutely right. Just taking it away from themselves. I mean, that big first down to respond after Eastern Washington went down and scored seven points and quieted the crowd. They come back, they respond. Unsportsmanlike conduct, bring back the, the drive stalls. They get lucky on an on a Eastern Washington mistake. They've got to put together a solid drive. We mentioned it earlier. It looked like Coach Fennessy was resigned to the fact that he's going to run the ball today no matter how he needs to do it. Who can blame him? You know, the guys you've got running the ball with Chase Reynolds. Uh, you've got to do that. But this is an important drive here. There's a big kick from the freshman, Kevin Miller, into the end zone. It'll go for a touchback. As you saw, the MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive. Of course, for news and stats on all Grizzly athletics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Andrew Sell will come back out to lead this Montana offense after we saw him take a shot on the end of their last possession. But that being said, we've seen the Grizzlies rotate their quarterbacks through much of this opening five, six weeks of the season. And the other quarterback that's seen a lot of time, Justin Roper, who transferred into the University of Montana from Oregon over the summer. He had a concussion against Portland State and has played sparingly since then. Sell flushed out, gets it to Reynolds, who makes the one-handed grab and is drilled at the 30-yard line by Sherritt. Wow. Those are two players going at it right there. That is fun to watch. That's fun football. Nice job by Sell getting out, making the throw, staying with it as long as you can. Beautiful one-handed catch. Look at this shot. Those are two big boys Ooh. playing out there. I mean, shared 24 tackles last week, and you're talking about Reynolds. That's a great collision, fun to watch. They're flying around, two fantastic football players. That's what it's all about. J.C. Sherritt, the junior linebacker out of Pullman, Washington. As Chase Reynolds gets the carry, picks up about two before he's 
chased down and tackled from behind. It's Tyler Washburn with the tackle, but we talked about J.C. Sherritt, the week he had last week, 24 tackles. He also had a 36-yard interception return for a touchdown against Weber State. We mentioned he leads the conference. He's third in the nation in tackles, and just last week was added to the Buck Buchanan Award watch list, of that Buck Buchanan Award given annually to the top defensive player in the football championship subdivision. Rightfully so. I mean, that's ridiculous. I don't even know if I've heard of that before. <laughs> I mean, 24 tackles. I was thinking the other week, my cousin plays for the Rocky Mountain Bears and Billings, he had 15. I thought, God, I don't know if I've seen that number before. And now you're seeing 24. That's unbelievable. Well, there was Sherritt once again on the end of that play, making another tackle on Chase Reynolds, but this one's going to be backed up. Another penalty. Illegal block below the waist. Number 88 on the offense. 15 yard penalty. The down remains two. Well, the illegal block. Third penalty of the game on Montana. They've been penalized three times for 45 yards and 30 of those penalty yards coming from Steve Baylor. Yeah, that's uh, got to be smarter than that. I can tell you from experience, the only thing you take from this when you go on these drives and you keep killing yourself with penalties, you've got to go as sell as a quarterback. You've got to go back over and tell those guys, listen, we're moving the ball. That ain't the problem. The problem is our mental mistakes. That's the problem. So you got to get confidence in that, see if they can put something together. Second and 23, Sell out of the shotgun and is sacked by Tyler Jolly. The junior nose tackle with his second sack of the year. And that will back the Grizzlies up even further. Just tremendous push up front. Tremendous push up front. And this Eastern Washington defense able to get able to get pressure, but they don't bring a lot of pressure. They only blitz about 10% of the time. Nonetheless, they lead the league in sacks, and most of those sacks coming out of their front four. That's the be best of both worlds if you can get away with that. If you got a front four that strong, you don't have to pressure. You can play good, solid defense in the backfield. And Mark Mariani makes the catch. A big gain out to the 39-yard line, but it's still not good enough to move the chains. That'll bring up a fourth and two. Fantastic catch. I mean, there's a lot of holes, obviously, out there because they're playing because they have so much room to deal with. But pretty, pretty catch. Nice job of getting it down. That's important to Montana from a, a field position standpoint in that only. You're going to be kicking from the, t from the 12 versus sitting up here kicking down to the you know the opposing 20 15 yard line that's important especially with a team this high powered and as the quarter expires the montana offense is on the field will we see a fourth and two to start the second quarter stick around and find out get ready for the second quarter as grizzly gridiron classics continues So Montana will indeed go for it on fourth and two to start the second quarter in their own territory. We see Andrew Sell under center, tried the hard count. Chase Reynolds, the deep back, he gets the ball, stood up at the line of scrimmage and stopped. But it appears Reynolds got a generous spot. We'll have to check it. Very close, and it will be a first down for the Grizzlies. Oof. Gutsy call by Bobby Howe going for it on fourth down in his own territory there. Yeah, I guess my comments are preempted by uh, Coach Howe's decision there. Very gutsy decision. Pays off. Needed something. They haven't had much momentum on offense. See what this can do. There's Reynolds again. And stood up by you know who. J.C. Sherritt once again with the tackle, a pickup of three. God, you love to see you love to see matchups like that. A really solid linebacker against a really solid running back, and it's living up everything that we thought it would be, uh, like you and I talked about in the beginning of the game. I mean, this is fun. This is exactly what we want to see. We're all either watching this on TV or here in person to watch a great game like that and watch real performers step up. Second and seven, Sell with time. 
and has Thaler, good for first down yardage, brought down in Eastern Territory at the 45. Now Thaler got her figured out now. He's just gonna stand up and hand the ball to his official and move the chains. Good time by the offensive line there. That's the key to that play right there, is keeping that front four out of cells. You know, it's not so bad the pressure around the side, just keep him out of, out of his stomach. You know, when you're a quarterback and you just, not necessarily that close, but you feel that pressure out in front of you and it's tough to get down on the ball and make a delivery. Here's the bubble screen for Sam Bratton. He picks up a block in five yards, tripped up at the 40 yard line. It'll bring up a second and five. Gratton, the redshirt freshman out of Billings, Montana. Good tackle by Johnson there. That's, again, a tough play. We mentioned it earlier uh, when Montana had a nice open field tackle like that. That's the island. Gratton is a very quick, uh, young, wide receiver, but explosive in the field. Johnson doesn't make that tackle necessarily. That thing's going to gain a lot more yards than it, than it did. Sell. Working out of the shotgun on second and five. Here's the draw for Reynolds. Lowers the shoulder at the first down marker to move the chains. A physical end to that run by Chase Reynolds. Great block by John Operu too on the, on the outside there. He makes a little post step and gets to the outside. I hope we can, I hope we can see it. See Operu pulling there? Look at that, just perfect. Well executed by, by the offensive line and Reynolds there. Dealing with some good players again on the other side. But if you execute well enough, get a hat on everybody, you can move the ball forward. Sell over the middle, has Mariani, and brought down inside the 15. Now that Grizzly offense starting to click. This is exactly what Eastern Washington wanted to avoid the whole first quarter they had the Montana offense out of rhythm now they're letting them get a little bit of rhythm and you can see Sell there sitting in the pocket you can watch them step you see when they got that hop going that they've got a rhythm they've got a feel for what's going on let's see what again we mentioned it in the front Eastern Washington kind of a bend don't break defense Sell all kinds of time looking for Gratton but has it batted down at the line of scrimmage That'll bring up a second and 10. So you're gonna see the exact same kind of things that we're talking about when Eastern Washington is on the field is the, the equivalent for Montana. The for up front four need to get the pressure. If they do not get the pressure, they're gonna give them time and there are holes in that defense. So you're gonna lean hard on your, on your four up front like Eastern Washington has all year. Let's see if they can get some pressure here and disrupt him. Sell right back to Thaler over the middle, and Thaler stood up. And once again, it's Sherritt making the tackle. Really smart, smart play by both Sherritt and the down four lineman for Eastern Washington. That was kind of a double fake screen. Ended up being a tight end middle screen. You saw Reynolds go to the outside. He gave him a quick pump, rolled the tight end across the middle. Those, are, those, those guys inside knew what was up from the beginning and held him to a literal no game. It brings up a third and eight, Montana coming into today, the top third down team in the league, but today they're 0 for three. And sells pass, tipped at the line of scrimmage and falling incomplete, so that'll bring up fourth down and here comes the kick unit for the Grizzlies. You'll see Sell's frustration here. He thought he had a touchdown. This is a great camera angle to see this from, look at that. Nice job by the D-line getting hands on it. He thought he had a touchdown, and as you can see, delivered appropriately, he would have. Brody McKnight, four for eight on field goals so far this year. This one well within his range, lining up for what would be about a 27-yarder. And oh. off the upright and through. McKnight rattles one home, and the Grizzlies are within five. Well, there you see Eastern Washington leads third-ranked Montana 10-5 here early in the second quarter at Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula. And the Eagles ranked 21st in the nation, Montana ranked third, so a top 25 matchup here today. 
could have been an even more high powered matchup as the Eagles dropped last week in this top 25 poll after falling to Weaver State. They were ranked 14th in the country, now ranked 21st. Taiwan Jones returned out to the 21 yard line. That's where the Eagles will take over as you've got to look at the MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive for news and stats on all Grizzly athletics. Log on to MontanaGrizzly.com. Matt Nichols, six of seven for 47 yards and a touchdown today. About what we expected. Absolutely great start for him and the Eastern Washington offense. Now everybody settled in, nerves are gone. The sense has been knocked out of a couple of players with uh, the shots we've seen. We're right in the middle of this thing, and uh, let's see what we got. Nichols off the play action. Has Matt Martin, the backup tight end. About 13 yards and a first down right out of the gates. Find a little hole there. Brandon Fisher playing tight to the line there and had to uh, come back and make the play from the backside. Good job by... Eastern Washington kind of just filtering that tight end out there. Just find a hole. Sometimes there's really complicated plays, and sometimes there's, hey, go out here and find a little hole, and I'll hit you. Nichols out of the shotgun, dumps it for Jones. And there's that speed. Boy, close to nine yards for Jones. Sets up a third and short, second and short. Right? Really nice blocking there. I mean, that, this is what these plays are all about. We saw them open the game with this play. Like we said, it's just a glorified pitch. But look at this speed. He just turns out, outruns the angle. Bobby Houck, after looking at some of his track times and watching some of the game film, says he thinks Jones is the fastest player in the Big Sky Conference. And here he is picking up the first down, tripped up by Eric Stoll. Well, Stoll's had a lot of shots at him here and just kind of glancing blows. Like you said, with that kind of speed and that kind of quickness, it's going to be tough to get a direct shot on him. And that's guys like that. That's how they operate. That's how they live. You know, you might get me. It's certainly not going to be head on. You know, they're quick enough. They're just going to take glancing blows and you got to have a gang of people to tackle me. He's not just quick and shifty. The sophomore out of the Bay Area has also got the breakaway speed. Had a 96-yard touchdown run against Idaho State earlier this year as Nichols hooks up with Boyce near sideline, forced out of bounds by Trumaine Johnson, about a yard short of the first down marker. These guys are making it look pretty easy right here. You can see just getting outside the pocket. Nice job blocking the ends down, get out on the corner. I mean, simple, simple stuff. That's a that's a 10-yard comeback. That's just those two guys. As long as you get that DN chopped down, you got that big open field. Voice goes up, gives a little push up, turns around, easy stuff. First down handoff goes up the middle for Tyler Hart. Hart picks up nine and a first down, and the Eagles, once again, just marching right down the field here. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Phil, and you know when your two safety, Schillinger and Stoll, are making tackles, it's not particularly a good thing. <laughs> that means you're making tackles 10 yards down the field. They've just done a really nice job of keeping Montana's defense off balance. Nichols off the play action. Dumps it after underneath for Hart, who's ridden out of bounds by Alex Shaw, the sophomore linebacker out of Lewis and Clark High School in Spokane. Short gain on play. We'll bring up second and about eight. Disciplined football right there by both players. Nichols understanding he doesn't have the down the downfield shot. Take your underneath. Shaw staying with a play long enough like that to hold it to a minimal gain. Nice fundamentals. Good execution. It's fun football. Coming up near the end of the game, we'll present our Northwestern Energy players of the game. Northwestern Energy delivering a bright future. Jones bouncing it to the outside. And there, finally, Eric Stoll does come up to make the stick, but not before Jones able to wiggle his way for five yards. Right there, pure athleticism. Watch this. This is great stuff. They've got two shots at him. Nope. Nope. I mean, two guys with the right angles cannot get, all they can get is a hand on him. And again, you got Stoll downfield trying to make a play on it. You got a safety making tackles. That's pure athleticism. 
Jones wide, lined up at wide receiver. Empty backfield and five split wide for Nichols. Forced out of the pocket, scrambles and nearly picks up a first down. I believe he was stopped just short, but good awareness by Matt Nichols to hear that little stopwatch in his head ticking down and tuck it down and run. That's right, and uh, nice job by Montana there. This is again what we're talking about. They got him so spread out. You've got to make a play. Usually there's some huge lanes in there. Good job by kind of converging by the D-line to, to get a, a stop before the first down, but a quick fourth and one here. Obviously, uh, everybody knows what's going on. Eastern Washington, one of six on fourth down conversion so far this year as Taiwan Jones gets the handoff, but the early flags come in. This play blown dead before the snap. And I think that'll change Bo Baldwin's call here on fourth down. Yeah, you're going to see the Montana coaches are just delighted in the way they played there. He did a quick shift at the end of the uh, at the end of the hard count there. You saw the D lineman go from the inside. Guys will go to a one three. That was before this, but they did a nice job of doing a quick shift and getting that that line jumpy, and they obviously moved. Well, I stand corrected. Bo Baldwin will go for it on fourth and six. Nichols locks it up, and the pass falls incomplete. Tony Davis was the intended receiver, and he was overthrown. You know, Montana draw, drew up some pressure there. Uh, first time we've really seen a lot of the, the, the double blitz on, on the same side, making a tough tough choice on the, on the running back. Nice job by Montana's defense putting some pressure on him. Montana takes over on downs right after the break. Justin Roper in at quarterback for Montana, seeing his first action of the day. His handoff goes up the middle for Thomas Brooks Fletcher. He picks up about six yards. And we talked about the Grizzlies rotating their quarterbacks this year. Roper transferred in from the University of Oregon over the summer, was highly touted. He played six games at Oregon last year before he was sidelined with a knee injury and played well this year before he was sidelined with a concussion against Portland State. He's got four touchdowns and two interceptions so far on the season. Yeah, Coach Houck is a very firm believer that that, that that works and the competition makes them both better. Thomas Brooks Fletcher, the senior, stopped short of the first down marker. And that'll bring up third and three. A nice piece in the in the papers this morning on Thomas Brooks Fletcher and the career he's had here at Montana, five years. And really now with the emergence of two fantastic running backs, uh, you know, throughout his career here that come in front of him, obviously with Reynolds now, he's done a great job taking the backup role and being really solid at it. Here's the pass for Brooks Fletcher, who springs it across midfield. A punishing hit finally dropped at the Eastern Washington 41, but a first down for the Grizzlies. That's their first conversion on third down so far today. I guess all we had to do was call his name and he showed up. Great run, tough run. Well, that's a big penalty there. You give up a third down like that, and then you, you tack on to the end of it. <clears throat> you know, going back, though, with Thomas Brooks Fletcher, you know, comes here, is the guy, played in a, in a bunch of playoff games and, and looked to be the guy, and then the emergence of, of people like Lex Hilliard and, and Chase Reynolds. Uh, some people would be sour with that. Some people show up every day and go to work and contribute to their team. Hats off to him. Brooks Fletcher, the consummate role player in the senior out of Bellevue, Washington. And here he is again. And a five yard gain, maybe close to six on first down. Brooks Fletcher, his best season, as you said, John, was as a red shirt freshman here at Montana back in 2006. And since then, 
has really played that backup role, but the coaches love what he did over the offseason, especially this year, and you see it here in the physical way he's been finishing all these runs. Once again, Brooks Fletcher moving the chain, stopped at the 11. Montana's got something figured out here with, with the big boys up front. They are really moving Eastern Washington's D-line around right now. Remember, go back to that, that snap that went over the punter's head. That kept this defense out on the field another full drive. So those boys have been out there a lot longer than uh, the Montana's defense. Possibly they could be wearing them down. I doubt it, but they're pushing them around. Another handoff, and once again, Brooks Fletcher with a lot of room right up the middle, tripped up from behind, just short of the goal line. That'll set up second and goal for the Grizzlies. When you talk about that defensive front for Eastern Washington, John, they lost three senior starters over the offseason. Lance Witherspoon, Jason Belford, and then Greg Peach, who was last year's Buck Buchanan Award winner. Yeah, pretty significant. They've done well all year, uh, you know, standing up in those guys' position. Talking about standing up, Brooks Fletcher, just that, at the one. Bring up third and goal for the Grizzlies. TB looking for his first touchdown of the year. Is it third and goal? No, or it's third and one. You're correct. Yeah. Grizzlies can pick up a first down. I think it looks like it's straddling about the half yard line. In fact, I think they're going to call for a measurement, John. Yeah. Very close. Excuse me. If you can't get a measurement out of this, I mean, the, the ball is on the half yard line. When you talk about the way they've committed to running the ball, John, on this drive alone, just one pass play for Montana and six running calls. Yeah, and that pass play was, was <laughs> we mentioned a court five pitch, just a little swing pass to, to Thomas Brooks Fletcher on the on the west side here of the stadium. And they're spotting it. This has got to be chain link short. It is. Always amusing the arbitrary nature of a spot that comes down to, to a chain link and people running in from the side and spotting <laughs> balls. Nonetheless, it will be a third and one. And Montana inside the one yard line can still pick up a fresh set of downs. Brooks Fletcher is the tailback. Montana out of the eye. The play action for Roper dumps it to the end zone for a wide open Rob Overton. Good play call there. Montana's got to stick around and go for two here because of the, the nature of the of the uh, safety that, that they had early or make this a seven point uh, or an eight point score. Nice play call. That gave Montana, you know, having a first down opportunity to chain links away gave Montana the playbook. I mean, call whatever you want to call. You, you really got two downs at it and, and then you, you got four beginning. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Heavy run set, run set at the, at the right side sneak the tight end out the back. Nice job. That's the double reverse for Mariani. Picks up a block and gets it in for the deuce. Montana ranked third in the country have taken their first lead of the ball game over 21st ranked Eastern Washington 13 to 10 here with 403 to play in the opening half in Missoula Phil Buck John Edwards and Derek Berkeley on hand and that was a big drive for the Grizzlies Jim. big drive a big two-point conversion as you can see now the difference on the scoreboard three points makes this a manageable game for Montana Brody McKnight's kick taken out of the end zone by Jones and stopped short of the 20-yard line as we get another look at the touchdown, there's your MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive. Eight plays, 69 yards, capped off by the two-yard touchdown pass to Rob Overton, the junior tight end out of San Leandro, California. His first career touchdown catch as a Grizzly. Nicely thrown ball and executed play by Roper there, who in turn went and made a, a block. I don't know 
if we'll call it a block uh, on the two-point conversion, but did a nice job of getting in the way of the defender and allowing Mariani to score. Here's the little pitch for Hart, which goes nowhere. George Mercer, the defensive end out of Libby, makes the stop for Montana in the backfield. Good play by Mercer, getting all the way out to the numbers there on the side of the field and making the play. That's a nice job and a long way for a D lineman to cover. But you can just see him scraping down the line, scraping down the line. Really good play. This is an important drive, Phil, to see what uh, Eastern Washington can do with this ball and answer what has kind of turned the momentum in Montana's favor. And Jones smacked by Bobby Alt, the sophomore out of Ontario, California. A loss on about four on the play. Give credit there to the Montana D-line. You can see right there a beautiful what they call a DT twist. The defensive tackle goes under, a DE twist. The tackle goes under and swoops around. Perfect. That's their answer to those delayed draws that we saw the 220-yard gains on earlier. Good adjustment by Montana's defensive staff. Eastern Washington 0 for 2 so far today on third down. This a third and 13. And Nichols evades the tackler. Has Aaron Boyce trying to make something out of it and ridden out of bounds. Well short of the first down is Boyce. Once again, it was Keith Thompson in on the coverage for the Grizzlies, and out comes the punt unit for Eastern. Good job by Nichols there, understanding that pressure behind him and stepping out and not taking a sack. That was really, really important, and for a veteran guy like that that's seen that, he understands that. Just get rid of the ball. They don't get a first down, but that's important not to take a sack there. Mark Mariani leads the league and punt returns. Lots of room the 40 and is wrapped up by once again J.C. Sherritt making the play. He has been all over the field once again today but once it's Mariani stopped short of midfield the Grizzlies will have a short short field in front of them with 220 left and all three of their timeouts remaining. Yeah you know Phil that's why you and I said it was so important for Eastern Washington to get some get at least a first down on that drive to run some time off of this clock and hopefully get some field position and kick it. They just gave Montana the ball back on the 47 yard line, two minutes left. That was a devastating failure to get a first down. Roper back in at quarterback, slings it into Javen Sembrano. The sophomore wide out across midfield, an 11 yard gain and a first down pickup. You know, Eastern Washington and Eastern Washington fans really don't want to see it. This is, these are the points you hate. Going into the half like this, to let them get one right before half, you just hate it. It's, a, it's demoralizing and just as you feel it's points they shouldn't have gotten. Picks up about two on first down. Eastern Washington confident in what they're doing. Very solid defense. They're just going to stay in the same thing they've been doing all day. They're not panicking. They're not blitzing crazy. They're doing what they know how to do. With a short field like this, though, once Montana, if Montana gets closer to the red zone, this defense uses that end zone and kind of keeps them a buffer between them. Under a minute 30 left in the half. Roper going to scramble across the 20 and forced out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Justin Roper with a big-time scramble to move the sticks for the Grizzlies. Heads up play there by Roper looking downfield, just like I just said. Eastern Washington kind of staying. You can see they actually brought an extra guy there. Once that passes around him, big green space. But now we're in the red zone. Eastern Washington can use the back of that end zone a little bit to let those safeties play up a little bit, close those zones down. Heavy set for the Grizzlies. Reynolds gets the carry. Jace Reynolds with the carry number 24. Short gain on first down for Reynolds. Gain of three makes it second down and seven. 15 yard line, Eastern Washington. Gain of three sets up a second and seven. 
Now you can see Montana now bringing in that with Eastern Washington's failure to get that first down and run some time off the clock with 111 left. You can use your big sets and run the ball down here, which they had so much success with on that last one. They're spreading it out a little bit here, what they call a pro formation, one tight end, three wide outs. Both teams with all three of their timeouts left. Reynolds cuts it upfield, breaks a tackle, and scores. Unfortunately, right there for Eastern Washington, they guessed wrong, brought safety pressure to the short side of this field. Montana runs the opposite direction, pulls the guard and the tackle, and leaves it out. It's just the switch in the formation. I mean, then, hey, that's the game. They brought in the, they brought the pressure from the wrong side, opened up everything on the other side, and basically Reynolds able to go in untouched. Ninth total touchdown of the season for Reynolds, the junior, and Brody McKnight makes it a 10-point Montana lead with a minute five seconds remaining in the half. Oh boy, I hate to keep repeating myself, but Eastern Washington really, really is going to kick themselves for letting that one go. And it needs to be noted, there's the pressure. You can see the safety rolling down on the opposite side and Jarrett, you're not going to see him miss a tackle like that very often. And uh, hey, that's the way the game goes. You make calls, you guess where they're going to go. It's a game of tendencies, and Montana guessed right on that one. Again, fans, coming up at half, Derek Berkeley will talk with the president and CEO of St. Patrick Hospital about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We'll also talk with Grizz soccer coach Neil Sedgwick and have the first half highlights and stats all brought to you by the bookstore at the University of Montana. Your Grizzly logo wear source since 1921. There's the MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive for news and stats on all Grizz athletics. Log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Back down to Derek Berkeley. Well, guys, we've been talking about the Grizz slow starts this season. Their first quarter, they haven't played very well. But now they really played well in the second quarter. They're winning 18 to nothing in this second quarter. Going into this game, they were winning 103 to 33 in the second quarter. So they're outscoring their opponents by more than 10 points a game in the second quarter. So a huge time for the Grizz to turn it around and get back on top, guys. Eastern. We'll get the ball back. Here's Jones with oh. a big hole, a seam up the sideline. And a big tackle made by the kicker, Brody McKnight. But Taiwan Jones, another explosive play for the sophomore out of Antioch, California. And that's a big play here with under a minute left in the half. Eagles with all three of their timeouts and good field position to start this drive. Now, to be frank with you, I'm kind of shocked that Montana decided to kick to him. You know, you give him the opportunity with the speed he has. All he needs is a crease. And if McKnight's not there, that's the other direction. Gives him great field position. So Nichols out of the shotgun. Five targets split wide on first down. Scrambles for about two before he's wrapped up by Alex Shaw and Brian Wilderhauser. And Bo Baldman will burn his first time out of the half. That stops the clock with 46 seconds. Well, Nichols wishes that he would have got either rid of the ball or, or to the sidelines on that and not had to spend one of them time out. It's not a big deal. You got three of them. Nice job of getting it done quickly and not letting a lot of time get off of the clock. Well, again, coming up near the end of the game, we'll present our Northwestern Energy players of the game. Northwestern Energy delivering a bright future. And we've talked so much about Matt Nichols, the senior quarterback, what he's done at Eastern Washington University today. Broke the school record for all career, all purpose yardage. And last week broke the school record for career passing yards in that loss to Weber State at home. And Nichols has taken that loss very personally all week long. He hasn't even thought about breaking the record, he said, because of that tough loss against Weber State. But that being said, he has been looking forward all week to playing at Montana. He said there's nothing better than having 25,000 people rooting against you. And he said even though they lost the last time they were here, it was probably the most fun he'd ever had during the middle of a football game. Oh, you love to have a guy with an attitude like that and uh, a, a competitor like that. You know, I know for... Fair to the snap. Ball start. 
Number 60 on the offense. Five yards to the previous spot. The down remains two. And I know for a fact that's exactly, he doesn't think about the records that are at this point in time insignificant to him. But it really is saying something with the kind of caliber of players that Eastern Washington has had over the years. And to put it in perspective for Montana fans, those are Dave Dickinson kind of numbers. I mean, these are guys that have really, really put up a lot of numbers. So hats off to him, and he's got his work cut out for him here. Nichols threads it. Had a man somehow fed that ball in between double coverage intended for Aaron Boyce, and Boyce just couldn't haul it in. Well, Carson Bender in there on that, causing a little bit of the pressure. Nice job by that boy. They almost had that. That, uh, that could have been a catch, but we've said it all game. It's got to be that front D line that makes the, makes the pressure when you're not blitzing. Credit Tremaine Johnson and Shan Schillinger with the pass coverage for the Grizzlies. Brings up a third and 13. Eastern Washington 0 for 3 on third down so far today. Nichols has his man, Tony Davis, and that will move the chains. 34 seconds left, but there's a penalty marker down. Foul, roughing the passer, number 47 on the defense. Automatic first down. And that clears that up. Severin Campbell, the junior defensive end, flagged for roughing the passer. And so tack that on. And here with 34 seconds left, the Eagles getting closer to uh, that scoring zone. Boy, that's just free yards right there. Look at the change in field position there. Now the ball's on the 31. I mean, that th with 34 seconds left and two timeouts left. Eastern Washington is not in a, I mean, they don't have to do anything drastic here. With two timeout, they can throw the ball in the middle of the field, no problem. Playbook is wide open. Montana comes with the blitz. Nichols forced to get rid of it. George Mercer was there bringing the pressure, as was Josh Stuber. That'll bring up a second and 10. Clock stopped with 14 seconds left. Well, now, now the time is an issue for him. That's a long developing play, and with that, with that incomplete, they probably can use the middle of the field one more time, but that's going to be it. We'll see what Eastern Washington wants to do as far as how they want to position themselves, if the field goal is what they're looking for here, or will, I mean, what they do on this next play will dictate what they're going to do. Beaumont in at running back, Nichols out of the shotgun. Lofts it for the end zone, intended for Boyce, and it's batted down. Triple coverage was there, and it was Trumaine Johnson, the sophomore corner out of Stockton, California, the one to make the play. Good no call here, I think, by the officials. This ball's throwing up. That's everybody's shot. Everybody can go up and, and try to get it. Doesn't look like any, any contact that uh, needed to be called. Good no call by the officials. I'm actually a little surprised that Nichols threw that up like that. You don't want to give away three points like that by throwing something into to triple coverage. Yeah, obviously, you want to get down and try to, to get a touchdown, but you certainly don't want to turn the ball over. Eastern takes its second time out of the half. The Eagles with one timeout remaining, 10 seconds left on the clock. They're looking at a third and 10 from the Montana 31 as we send it back down to Derek Berkeley on the sidelines. Guys, you've seen the Grizz secondary making a couple plays on the ball here. That's something they struggled with earlier on in the year. Andrew Swink, one of the cornerbacks, saying this week that against Northern Arizona, they got burned a lot in the secondary. And he said they really feel that they learned a lot from that game. Lots of double moves, lots of receivers getting wide open and breaking tackles. And they felt they would use what they learned there against Eastern Washington today. And so far, it looks like they're doing pretty well, guys. Thank you, Derek. Very interesting play call here. Usually you can guess six or seven seconds what you what you need to run a play. So maybe they're conceding that the field goal is out of question. I mean, Mike Jarrett is long this year's from 49 yards. So Nichols looks to the outside for Boyce and it sails incomplete. So that brings up fourth down. Three seconds left on the clock. And here comes Mike Jarrett, the sophomore kicker out of Puyallup, Washington to attempt a field goal here at the end of the half, which would cut 
the Montana lead down to one possession. This would be a 48 yarder as Bobby Houck takes his first time out of the half going to try to ice Jarrett a little bit. But this is within Jarrett's range. As we said, his long this season, 49 yards. This one's going to be from about 48. But that being said, he's missed two out of three from just inside 30 yards. So, or not inside, just about 30 yards this year. So he, consistency's been an issue, I guess you can say, for Jarrett. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear. We saw it in the first field goal, he kicked up plenty of leg. And we'll, this would be a real nice feather in their hat if they could get a field goal out of this. L you know, let Montana march down and score that one on the, on the bad field position that they gave Montana. Eastern Washington would thoroughly enjoy getting three points out of this. Either way, Bobby Houck, as you see there, is going to let uh, Jarrett think about it for a few minutes. Good opening half here from Washington Grizzly Stadium. I think just about what we expected. It's been a dogfight in recent years between these two programs. Oh, no, it's been fantastic. Very entertaining football and really good football. Jarrett lines up for the 48 yarder. Appears to have the leg and does. Drills it. it. Boy. Mike Jarrett, money from 48 yards out, and he's pumping out the Eastern fans that made the trip over. Grizzlies head into the locker room, up by seven as Derek Berkeley makes his way over to track down Coach Howe. Now, what a fantastic first half. All right, Coach, you got to like a couple of offensive drives that are really running the ball well. What do you like about your offense? Well, I like how physical the run game is. The running backs are finishing plays. They're the most physical players on the field on either, either side right now. How about defensively? How do you think you've stacked up against this good Eastern Washington offense? Well, that's a, that's a lot of points for us to give up in a half. The biggest play of the half was by our crowd on fourth and one. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Grizzlies up by seven at halftime, guys. Bobby Howe giving a little credit to Grizz Nation here as the third-ranked Grizzlies have a seven-point lead at the half in Missoula. Back with more on the Halftime Show right after this. The second half of Grizzly Gridiron Classics starts now. There you see a beautiful day in Missoula for a football game as Montana leads it 20 to 13, we're ready to start the third quarter. Derek Berkeley back down on the sidelines. Looks beautiful down there. It is, it's really a beautiful day. The breeze picked up a little bit in the first half, but it's died back down now here on the field. I got a chance to talk to Eastern Washington head coach Bo Baldwin as he came back onto the field. I asked him, you know, what changed? They had all the momentum, they lost it. He didn't feel they did anything wrong, they just didn't finish drives. He thought they had to settle for a couple field goals. They put touchdowns on the board, it looks a little bit different. Also, I asked him about stopping this Grizz running game that really picked up in that second quarter. He says, really, it's just getting to the right spot and making tackles. Nothing special. He feels his team is right in this game. They go out and put 30 minutes of great football together. Whatever the scoreboard is, he's going to feel good about the effort, guys. Thanks, Derek. They might want to try cloning J.C. Sherritt, too, if they want to stop the Montana running game. An interesting point, though. Last week in their loss against Weber State, the Eagles gave up 12 points in the final minute of the first half. Now, they gave up a touchdown with a minute to go in the half here again today. They gave up two touchdowns in the final four minutes of the first half. So Eastern Washington really kind of struggling to, to keep teams off the board at the end of the half. And as you talked about, John, those are the points that can really come back to haunt you in the end. That's right. And I think maybe they've turned the corner on that, uh, particularly from last week anyhow, with staying together and keeping their heads about them and going down and getting a field goal right before half. That's, that's big. And I think, you know, relate that to your uh, well, Montana penalty frankly was probably the key in that entire drive but Nichols did a nice job of uh, not turning the ball over and allowing him to get a field goal so I think uh, they played with some confidence they show they know how to play in tight situations like that and not get down after a touchdown like Montana put on them right before half. Well Montana leads the overall series between these two programs 24 10 and 1 
The Grizzlies have won the last three in a row against Eastern Washington. Eastern here in Missoula, 4-12-1 all time. Their last win coming in 2005. Big game as the Eagles knocked off the Grizzlies 34 to 20. And then in 2007, the last time they were here, what a classic football game. The Eagles took the lead late. Montana needed to convert on fourth and long and ended up getting a long field goal from Dan Carpenter in the final minute to come from behind and win. The Grizzlies with the ball to open the second half. Javen Sambrano picks up a block, tripped up from behind, but there are flags down back around the 20 yard line. Good blocking out there, allowing obviously possibly some illegal blocking. No. Well, that's going to oh. go against Easter. I, mean, I don't know. The, the call was an illegal block. But a chop block. Block in the back on the kicking team, number 46. 15 yards to the end of the run. First down. Wow. What field position Fontana to start the second half. Bo Baldwin not pleased. Fourth penalty on his club so far today. Fifth penalty, rather. Eagles been flagged. Enjoyed over halftime, Phil. Uh, Coach Denny, he popped into uh, our booth. We celebrated with the other classes of 69 and 70 football teams that were put into the Hall of Fame, and uh, along with Montana Notables, P.D. Dolan and others, uh, they had a great ceremony, really fun to see him. He had a great run here at, at Montana, and uh, just a consummate gentleman, and lovely to see him again and doing real well. The Grizzlies start this drive in Eastern Washington territory. Chase Reynolds gets the handoff on first down and picks up three. Justin Roper starting a quarterback for the Grizzlies this half. And here's Reynolds making the catch, tripped up by J.C. Sherritt. But the eight-yard gain good enough to move the chains. So nice little control dump to Reynolds over the over the middle. Basically, you got Reynolds on a linebacker right there. Jarrett was the one that made the tackle. He wasn't the one that Reynolds beat on the play. It's just a one-on-one -on -one kind of basketball play there. Reynolds able to dodge Sherritt, but not able to avoid the grasp of the second Eastern tackler to get there. It's a one-yard loss. That brings up second and nine. Justin Roper, perfect so far on the day. Four for four for 41 yards and a touchdown. Working out of the shotgun, off the play action. Delivers it to Steve Failer, but Failer cannot hang on. It's Tyler Jolly dropping back in pass coverage. That brings up third and nine. Montana, two of six so far today on third downs. Well, pretty important here to see if Montana can maintain possession of the ball. And get themselves into comfortable field goal range, if anything, or convert on a big, long third down. Roper lops it. And it's ruled incomplete on the sideline. Failer came down with it, but he was out of bounds when he made the catch, and that brings up fourth down. Here's Brody McKnight on to attempt the extra point or the uh, field goal rather. Right there, you see, you'll watch that. You just wish that that ball would have been thrown a little bit earlier and not off Roper's back foot. They, he was doing a nice job of looking off the safety to the right of the field. But as he was backing up, crow hopping, crow hopping, backing up, he never stopped. Even, even on those fade balls, very important to stop, plant that back right leg and step into your throw. Gets the nose of that ball going down. It's a lot more accurate throw. McKnight's kick is up. No good. Wide right. That's a 
He just dodged the bullet. Eastern Washington really just dodged, dodged the bullet, allowing Montana with such good field position. And to turn that into a no-point turnover, that's a big, big play. You and I talked about it right at the beginning of the second half. Let's see if they can regain that momentum that they had at the beginning of the game. Be interesting to see what their offense goes back to, how they start moving the ball and attributing the ball to different players. They've got so many weapons, they just didn't finish drives, like Berkeley said about uh, Coach Bowden said. Oh, and here's Taiwan Jones breaking tackles. Finally dragged down by Shan Schillinger after a pickup of seven or eight, close to eight yards. That'll bring up second and two. Taiwan Jones, though, expect him to uh, find some running room here in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. You want to get that guy the ball all the time. He is so quick. And he just, you can't, all you do is get arms on him. And he doesn't go down on arm tackles. Here is Jones once again. Cuts it back and picks up a block. Tackled by Eric Stoll at the 45-yard line, but a seven-yard gain, good enough for a first down. Kind of fun to watch him run. He's just looking for green space. Give me one guy, I'll beat him, I guarantee you. That's what he's, that's what he's telling you. Get me in space, give me one-on-one. -on -one. I'll put a move on him, and they're going to have to take a couple guys to tackle me. Look at this. I mean, just that pop and lock that he's got on those uh, on that first initial move just kind of leaves defenders frozen. Nichols to pass and thrown behind Tony Davis. Incompletion will bring up second and 10. You talk about Jones. So far today, nine carries for 70 yards, averaging 7.8 a carry. And that's actually less than his Seaburn average on the year. He's averaging almost eight and a half yards a carry. I mean, when you're averaging that kind of run production, yeah, give him the ball. Make somebody stop you. Give him the rock is right. Grigsley showed D or the blitz. Great call into that blitz. Montana did a nice job of picking that up. You had double pressure, what they call usually a, a stud whip blitz. That means your strong side linebacker and your weak side linebacker are coming off the edges. What you want to have into that always, a wide receiver screen like this is phenomenal. A running back screen is phenomenal. They had it. Nice job by Montana's interior line, recognizing it and getting their butt out there and doing it in a hurry because that could have been a big, big play. Perfect call into the perfect defense, but they got away with it. Nichols getting rid of it quickly has Tony Davis. And it appears that Davis, with the extra effort, was able to pick up a first down. And he was. Davis coming into today, the team's leading receiver. Senior out of Olympia, Washington. Jones makes his way through the line of scrimmage. About two yards on first down. Jones clearly willing to do it. He's not a guy that wants to run in between those tackles and pound away. Again, he wants to get out that space and let those athletic abilities he has really highlight against one-on-one -on -one matchups. But doesn't affect the job of picking up three, four yards on first down. Nichols rolling out. And has his man. It's caught by Boyce. Very near the first down marker. It's going to be about a yard short. Well, we saw that same play in the first half, too. They're going to use a tight end to block down on the D end and allow Nichols to get on the outside. You'll see it right there, blocking in. Gets on the outside, looking for holes. That's all they're doing, just trying to find holes. Nice throw across his body on the run. Difficult throw to make. Big third down. Third and one. And Daryl Beaumont stopped in the backfield, surged, got an extra effort on the end of it, may have picked it up, but the spot appears to be short of the first down. It's very, very close, but it appears it will be fourth and less than a yard. 
once again, it's Eric Stoll making the tackle for the Grizzlies. Coming in from the safety position, aggressive blitz there by Coach Paulson with the safety up and making the stop on a third and short. Eastern, 0 for 1 on fourth down conversions already today. Quick drop for Nichols, and the pass is batted at the line of scrimmage. It's Tyler Hobbs swatting it away. Grizzlies take over on downs. Well, if there's one thing that Eastern Washington seems to be lacking is that ability to run the ball solid in between the tackles here on fourth and one, trying to run a little three-step slant to the outside. You know, I, you'd like to see him be able to, to match up from the, from the O-line perspective with the D-line and keep it between the tackles and pick up half a yard. Clearly, uh, they didn't feel they had it. Andrew Sell checking back in at quarterback for Montana. Thomas Brooks Fletcher at running back. He gets the carry and picks up four. Well, that's exactly what Eastern Washington is going to be upset with is not finishing drives. That's exactly what they talked about coming in. And Coach Baldwin, you know, he's going to say, this is what we went in and preached on at halftime, guys. You move the ball. They did a nice job of moving the ball through the midfield section and they just can't finish a drive. Brooks Fletcher on the draw. Stood up just short of the first down marker. In on the tackle, among others, was Matt Johnson, the sophomore out of Tumwater, Washington. And interesting story about Johnson. I mean, he's just a sophomore. He and his twin brother, Zach, both started for the Eagles last year as freshmen and uh, led the team. They went 1-2 in tackles as freshmen. Zach, though, had a blood clot develop in his knee over the summer. And how about the one-handed catch from Steve Thaler? Breaks a tackle and stopped at the 28. The tight end out of Frenchtown showing some hands. Well, and that is an aggressive play call as well. Third and short. Heavy set, good play fake. Get over the ball and look up. Sell actually had two choices there. Down the sidelines, he had somebody wide open as well, but nice job of finding the wide open receiver and delivering a catchable ball. Sets Montana up with a first and 10 now. From the Eastern 28, Thomas Brooks Fletcher, the carry, and picking up maybe one. But back to the Johnson twins, Matt, Currently starting at safety for the Eagles. His twin brother, Zach, started at linebacker last year, but had a blood clot develop after knee surgery last summer, and he's out for the season. And so Matt was wearing number five at the beginning of the year. He's now wearing number 10. That was his brother's number, and he's wearing it in Zach's honor. It's a talented family. There's Thomas Brooks Fletcher. Another physical run stopped at the 20 yard line. Uh, Johnson forced to make the play there too. And like Coach Haug talked about going in on the half, the most aggressive and physical players on the field today have been Montana's running backs. And I would have to agree with that. They are really finishing runs and delivering blows. Unfair for Johnson that Thomas Brooks Fletcher has a 10 yard run at him, but nonetheless, they are really finishing the runs. Back in the ball game, the running back is Chase Reynolds who gets the carry. Picking up two and moving the chains. That sets Montana up now with a first and 10 from inside the Eastern 20. Well, Eastern Washington, you know they really want to stop here. Sell off the play action. Looks end zone. Has Tyler Palmer. Touchdown. Really nice play call there by Coach Fennessy. He put the corner on that side in just an unwinnable situation. You see here with a great little play action slide. Hold the corner. The corner had the high low. There was a back in the backfield. And you see him there. He was sitting in the middle of the field. Didn't know where to go. Didn't have any choice, really. Great play call. Nice execution. 
Palmer, the senior out of Missoula with his second touchdown catch of the year. Luke Montana. Now with a two touchdown lead here in the third quarter. Montana leads it 27-13 with 6.09 to play here in the third quarter in Missoula. We talked about the Johnson twins playing for Eastern Washington. Well, the Grizzlies have their own set of twins, the Palmers. And Tyler Palmer just caught his second touchdown of the year, an 18-yard strike from Andrew Sell. Kick. Taken and returned out, stopped short of the 15-yard line. Well, Montana's fired up right now. They've got this second-half crowd into the game now. People are running around, excited, making plays. Exactly what Eastern Washington didn't want to have happen. Let's see if they can turn it around, slow the momentum down, and get it back in their favor. There's a look at the MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive. Seven plays, 64 yards in three minutes, 12 seconds. Capped off Andrew Sell to Tyler Palmer, 18 yards for the touchdown. And for news and stats on all Grizzly athletics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Matt Nichols gets rid of it quickly. Has Tony Davis. It's up a block, and there's a flag thrown in the area of that block. It was Nathan Overbay out on the edge, the tight end, hoping to spring Davis, but instead he's flagged for the hold. Holding on the offense, number 19. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. You know, Phil, I'd, I'd be interested to see why Eastern Washington isn't pressing the ball down the field. We have not seen very deep, many deep balls thrown. I understand that Montana's playing a very conservative defense, but you'd, you'd think, just to keep them honest, and let some of these big-time wide receivers that you have, or, or even your big tight end at 6'5", throw them down there. Let's see if they can make a play. They, they're doing well throwing the ball short, but they need to see if they can't pressure something down the field. Well, they but, certainly did that the last time they were here. Nichols. In 2007, his last time in Washington Grizzly Stadium, threw for 451 yards. That's his best game in his career. As the handoff goes up the middle. Taiwan Jones by Mike McCord. Nifty run there just to get him get him 10 yards back. But I'm not suggesting they're running out of time. But as the, the clock winds through 515 here in the third, it's not desperation time by any means, but they need a spark. And Jones and these other these other wide receivers they have can provide that for them. They just try to try to get it in their hands and get it downfield. Nichols fires for Davis. Davis cuts it upfield, brought down at the 25-yard line. It will depend on the spot as to whether or not he picked up a first down. And it appears that they will uh, call for a measurement. Eastern relying on their screen game to get the ball in their, their playmaker's hands. You know, the hard part about it is, and I, I'm repeating myself uh, and Coach at the second half, they have moved the ball officially almost all day. The problem is they're doing a nice job on these screen plays and the short plays and picking up yardage. It's just when it comes time to pick up that third down, to, you know, the real key plays, they're unsuccessful, resulting in the, the score differential that you see on your screen. And if they don't start that right now, they're going to find themselves too far back to start, if they're going to run the same offense, too far back to run these little short screens and stuff. They need to pop a play. Jones was indeed short, and Nichols on third and less than a yard picks up the first down on the quarterback keeper. Nice job by Nichols there, realizing where his hole's going to be. As a quarterback, when you step to that line, you kind of pick and choose where your, you know, your one technique and three technique is. Those numbers determine where your D linemen are lined up at. He picks, picks the right side and actually picks up about five yards on the sneak. Good job. 
Empty backfield for Nichols on first and 10. Flushed out of the pocket. Dumps it for Davis. And it was nearly intercepted by McCord. Pressure by Montana there, confusing the blocking schemes for the, you can see there you got two guys going after the same, the same blitzer. That's confusing the offensive line of Eastern Washington, how the blitz came on that play. Got pressure in Nichols' face, forced, forced an errant throw. One guy we have not heard a whole lot of from today, Aaron Boyce. Just three catches. And here's a broken tackle for Taiwan Jones. Into Montana territory and brought down from behind by Caleb McSurdy. But Taiwan Jones can break it open at any moment and just did. Well, leave it to that. You and I were just talking about it. Got to get the ball in your playmaker's hands. All it takes is one pop like this. I mean, here's really poor tackling by Montana. And on a guy like that, we've said it all day, if you can get him arm tackles, he's going to break arm tackles. Montana's lucky he didn't find a seam and take that one to the house. Boy, and you could really see his speed on that replay as well. First and 10 from the Montana 19. Nichols on the keeper. Tackled by Severin Campbell after a pickup of about six yards. Really nice play call there. Pressure into his face. Fake the sweep to that direction. And again, Campbell's, he's got to stay home there. That's his job. You're having two blitzers come right on the top of your screen. Very good call right into the face of it. And Campbell, he was looking in the backfield. He got caught cheating with his eyes a little bit right there. Came back and made the play. Nice job of staying with it. But that's his duty, that's his, that's his job. Nichols looking for the end zone and caught for the touchdown. Ashton Gant, the junior out of Pullman, Washington with his first touchdown of the season. Well, really important drive and well executed drive by Eastern Washington. That is exactly what they needed. You and I were starting to feel when we were talking about the clock winding through 515. If they let this one slide, uh, momentum going away, all that jazz. Hey, go down and make a couple of great throws and a couple of good plays. They're back in this thing. Mike Jarrett's extra point is good, and the Eagles back within a touchdown. Eastern Washington within seven after the touchdown from Matt Nichols to Ashton Gant. Here with under three minutes to play in the third quarter in Missoula. There's your MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive. Eight plays, 85 yards in three minutes, 10 seconds. And for news and stats on all Grizzly athletics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. The kick taken by Peter Wynn, the true freshman out of Bellevue, Washington. Breaks a tackle, but is stood up just past the 20-yard line, so Montana will take over at the 22 when we come back. Montana leads it 27-20 here with 2.42 to play in the third quarter. Andrew Sell checks in a quarterback for the Grizzlies to start this drive. The handoff for Chase Reynolds right up the middle in about seven yards. 51. There you see Sarah Enna on the right side. And she's in Eastern Washington red because her brother, her younger brother Paul, plays for the Eagles. He's a backup D lineman, but Sarah Sitting next to her teammate Shantae Nance Johnson plays here at the University of Montana basketball team. Sarah Enna, a standout sophomore in the Big Sky Conference last year and expected to start for the Lady Grizz this year. She's here to cheer on her brother Paul. Sell to pass and nearly intercepted. He was looking for Mark Mariani over the top, but Johnson was there and is 
upset with himself for not hauling in the pick. Well, Sells played very well today. You can just see that one kind of got out of his hand, kind of came out of the top of his hand a little bit, just settled down and, and settle in and throw in that. But for the most part, both of Montana quarterbacks have played ending the key here, mistake-free football so far. Under two minutes to play in the third. Sell out of the shotgun. And blast it as he throws. It was Washburn, the freshman linebacker out of Sammamish, Washington, breaking through to put the big hit on Sell as he let go of it, and that brings up fourth down. Well, credit Eastern Washington there. Very big stop. Beautiful punt. It's a great punt from Sean Wren, taken by Tony Davis inside the 20. Breaks a tackle and gets it out. Tackled at the 35 yard line by Jeff Larson. So a short field in front of Matt Nichols and the Eagles offense as they take over with a chance to tie or take the lead with a touchdown and two point conversion. Well, by no means was Eastern Washington out of that, uh, out of this game at any point in time, but boy, they are in the thick. Exactly where they want. They have weathered the storm so far when it looks like they were on the brink. They've come back and played admirably. Again, coming up near the end of the game, we'll present our Northwestern Energy players of the game. Northwestern Energy delivering a bright future. Here's Gant. The freshman who just caught the touchdown on the Eagles' last possession. Picks up six before he's dropped by Josh Stuber. You can see Eastern Washington uh, in their hurry up offense. They're not huddling and they're just calling plays. This is exactly how they started the game. On Jones picks his way through the Montana defensive front for another couple yards. Third, the Eagles. And Jones slow after that play. Certainly not what you want to see if you're an Eastern Washington fan. No, that would be a, a huge loss for Eastern Washington. He has been the player that has provided that spark when they need it. The leading rusher in the Big Sky Conference. Really to tough to tell to what goes on there and uh, just a lot of stuff going on. Well, there you s look like maybe his left leg. Got folded up underneath him a little bit. Generally, when that happens, it could be knee-related, and that is certainly nothing that the Eagles want to deal with at this point. Checking out that left knee. And that's a good sign. Yeah, that's a great sign. Jones will have to come out as on the injury brings up a Third and two for the Eagles. Eastern Washington, three of nine on third down so far today. Nichols out of the shotgun, an empty backfield, five targets split out wide. Gets it out and completes it for the first down. It's Kaufman, the freshman out of Denver. When you have somebody as accurate as Nick, makes the a real viable op opportunity and option on third downs and, and, and tough downs like that, where you need to pick up three, four yards. They're clearly not that comfortable running the ball in that situation between the tackles. Nichols is accurate enough to put it where it needs to be. And there's a pit throw for Aaron Boyce, who won zone touchdown Eastern and there comes the flag on the end of the play you talk about the pinpoint accuracy doing though and there it was 
Well, we've been talking about this all the time. When are they going to stretch the field? And maybe they're just waiting for the perfect time, which was which was then, and the perfect pass. Right there, that whole play is set up by that play action right there, and that's to suck your safeties down into the middle of the field. Good ball, five. unsportsmanlike conduct. Number nine on the offense. The touchdown is good. The penalty will be administered on the kick. So there you have it. Sportsmanlike, I guess they felt he was touching by walking it into the end zone. Either way, should he tack on this extra point? game going into the fourth quarter. And we are knotted up 27 apiece. Under 10 seconds remaining in the third. John Edwards, if we wanted an exciting football game here today, I think we're in store for a finish. We've got it, and that's exactly, I mean, I, what, what I it's almost that Eastern Washington's coaching staff was feeling the same stuff that we were feeling up here. We've got to pressure down the field and let our big play wideouts make something happen. And that's, I mean, perfect call and perfect execution by Nichols with the play action. Get that safety down, tucked in, looking for the run. You know, Montana safety is making a lot. So they realize that they have to help and run support set up simply by that. And look at this, look at this ball right on the up top right shoulder. 50 yards on the down to Boyce as we send it back to Derek. Well, guys, you talked about a little bit about how good Nichols and Boyce have played through their entire careers. Most players, when they come to this stadium, don't turn in good days. Montana notorious great in this field. But Boyce and Nichols in the best games amazing four-year careers just two years ago on this field. Boyce actually had 17 catches for 232 yards the last time he played on this field. So it's an intimidation factor for the seniors, guys. Thank you, Derek. Nine seconds remain here in the third quarter. Again, the Eagles will kick off from the 15-yard line after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty flag for Boyce at the end of the touchdown. Funny watching Boyce. He knew was happening. He, he didn't even step it off. Here's win. Dropped short of mid. We'll take over with field position to start this drive. Two seconds left. Get a look at the scoring drive. Four plays, 69 yards. 29, the 50 yard from Nichols to Boyce. One of many between those two. And of course, for news and stats on all Grizzly athletics, log on to MontanaGrizzlies.com. Well, to expound on Derek's comments a little bit, guys like that that are veterans and have played a lot and are confident in themselves, they love coming to Washington Grizzly to play. It's exciting. Off the play action, Sell hits Tyler Palmer on the outside for a near five yards. And we head to the fourth quarter. All tied up, 15 minutes to play and nothing left between these two clubs. Get ready for the fourth quarter on Grizzly Gridiron Classics. Thank you, congratulations. First place in the Big Sky Conference, up for grabs here. John Edwards, Derek Berkeley, all Seven apiece between the Grizzlies and Eagles. Mark Mariani gets the catch to start the fourth quarter and picks up about six yards, moves it down inside the territory. Mariani last week against Cal Poly had a big game, was named Big Sky Conference Player of the Week on offense. Six catches for 200 yards and two touchdowns. He's provided big play after big play for the Grizzlies this season, and you can bet they'll be hoping for another one here in the final frame. Given Montana one safety look here, look for something deep. And there it is to Mariani and oh. Sell overthrew him. That's one a quarterback and a wide receiver want to have back. You cannot miss those when given the opportunity. That's the first one that we've seen today where Eastern Washington has given Montana that one safety look. 
you can see then you got somebody like Mariani matched up and you're hoping that's a mismatch. You got to make those throws. And so the Eagles will get the ball back. Punt for the Grizzlies. Spiral. Takes a bounce and nearly was down. In fact, they're going to say it was down at the one yard line by Donnie Lazowski. And so Matt Nichols and the Eagles will have 99 yards in front of them as they take over on the one. Donnie Lazowski, the sophomore out of O'Day High, making the play on special teams backed up against the north end zone of Washington. Of the loudest stadiums in all of the football championship subdivision. Taiwan Jones takes the handoff, but there's a flag down in the end zone, and it will be a false start against Eastern Washington. Third of the snap, false start on the offense. After this is the goal, the down remains one. And while the penalty's nice, when you're on the one yard line, half the distance to the goal doesn't make much of a difference. Yeah, the, the simple fact is there's not a lot of real estate there. Nonetheless, it gets this crowd. Coach Houck mentioned the crowd. This gives them some kind of gusto that they're, they are having a serious effect on the football game. So they're excited about that in that north end zone. Well, Bo Baldwin talked about over this week. He said he wished he had the money. Been crowd noise to his stadium at Eastern to get ready for this. But he's also confident. He says his team's played some loud stadiums already. They played at Cal this year, at Texas Tech, and Colorado last year. As Tony able to bring it out of the end zone, brought down immediately by Tremaine Johnson. I like the play call. Get get out of that box where you're not comfortable. Get it outside. You're hoping that your guy can beat the corner on a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a great job by Tremaine Johnson. Beating off the block and making the tackle there. That is fantastic football. Second and eight. Nichols, Nichols out of the shotgun. The gets rid of it quickly. And has Nicholas Edwards, the freshman receiver out of Tacoma, Washington, out across the 10. And good enough for a first down for the Eagles. So that will give this Eastern Washington offense just a little breathing room. Huge pickup, huge pickup. Jones is the deep back on first and 10. Gets the handoff. Runs into Sean Lebsock, Montana's leading tackler and senior team captain. The middle linebacker out of Billings makes the stop for a gain of three. Well, that's just got to be so relieving for Eastern Washington just to get out of that hole. Really nice job to get out of it and out of it with a pass. Those are risky, risky passes down there. They knew they had a cushion and made an accurate throw. Nichols has played very well so far today. Here's Tony Davis. South. He makes a little move to the side, but realizes as soon as he's not going to get to the sideline any more yards, hey, plant that foot and turn up. You see it here. He'll take a little peek. Field, get some more yards. Really nice job. The rollout for Nichols. Dumps it out, 
and making a great catch at the sideline. It's Edwards once again. Fantastic job by Eastern Washington. Everybody on the field at that moment. Huge block on the side. But I think Chris Thomas made the made the pancake right there. He'll get a sticker for that. And then come out and make a throw like this on the sideline. Fantastic. You can see how explosive these guys can be when they want it. I mean, making plays like that, hard to defend. Here's Jones. Picking up three on first down. Mike McCord with the tackle for the Grizzlies. Some memorable fourth quarters in recent years between these two programs. Maybe none more memorable than the last time the Eagles were here in 2007. They took the lead late, but Montana able to put together the game-winning drive and a long field goal in the final minute to steal a win. Could we be in for another fantastic finish? Blitz by Montana. It's Sean Lebson. Line. They're showing two blitz. And as you can see, Lebsock is the one that actually blitzed. And Alex Shaw backed off. And the O line was ready for two blitzes. They switched it up on him, confused, let Lebsock in and forced that. That could have been a big play. Forced an errant throw by Nichols. The Eagles. Four of ten on four of third down so far today. As Nichols flushed out of the pocket. And dumps it out intended for Gant and it's ruled incomplete. A big stop for the Grizzly defense. Nichols getting a little dangerous with the ball there. Trying to make a play though. Good job by Montana. Good enough coverage downfield to keep him guessing, keep him guessing. Some fighting going on there for the ball. So Cameron Zuber, the junior out of Chehalis, Washington, on to punt. He's been a student at Eastern Washington since 2006, but this was his first year on the team. He tried to walk on back in 2007, but didn't make it. This year he did. As Marianne. Not. Mark Mariani with another magical punt with touchdown. Big time plays, no matter how hard you key on somebody like that. I mean, look at this. This is an individual effort. I mean, gets around the corner, has the presence of mind to stay in bounds, directing. His blockers, where he needs it done. And the rest is history. We've talked about it so many times this year when Montana has needed a big play like that. It's been number 80, the senior captain who came through. That one, 82 yards on the punt return to the house in Montana. Every team has their guy. Mariani is Montana's guy, and he shows up when he needs to. Welcome back to Washington Grizzly Stadium, where Montana have retaken the lead on the big play from Mark Mariani, 82 yards on the punt return for a touchdown here. Again, we want to extend a special hello to all our viewers watching on our affiliate KHQ in Spokane and everywhere else around the state of Montana, satellite parties around the country. A classic from Washington Grizzly Stadium so far. As this kick returned out to the 25-yard line, Eagles will take over. And you have to think 
that's not the last touchdown we're going to see today. The no, absolutely are not. And, and Phil, you and I were talking about the half. What you want to really recognize about Mariani there is the fact when he made the first two guys miss, it looked like the left side of the field was was open. But knowing that they had returned right on, he just kept slowly where he's got teammates to help him go that last 40 yards and pick up a couple key blocks for him. Eastern Washington has to answer here. They got veteran guys. Let's see if there's Nichols out of the shotgun up the sideline and was looking for Brandon Kaufman, but it Kaufman overthrown. Well, Montana there again, we have seen Montana turn up the pressure. It's been effective in the fact that it's it's having Nichols. where you got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. There's Jones, second and 10. And picks up about. Boy, he is nifty. He'll sneak through the smallest sliver of holes and avoid big, big hits. He's just so elusive, it's easy for him. Derek Berkeley for more on Mark Mariani. We got there. Derek. Well, guys, earlier this week I asked Coach uh, Coach how when you need these big plays and, and Mark Mariani always makes them. Do you think about getting him the ball? And he joked and said, "No, we just tell Mark go out and make a big play." But it really seems like that a lot for number 80. With that punt return, he's now got three of the longest four punt return touchdowns in school history, guys. Wow. As Matt Nichols now over 300 yards passing for the day hits Brandon Kaufman again and Kaufman fights his way for another eight yards. Really good pickup there recognizing this is the same blitz that confused them last time where you've got either Lebsock blitzing and Shaw uh, backing off or vice versa. The problem is you got to play a little bit of coverage behind that because you don't want to get beat deep like they've been trying to. That that kind of coverage you know five six seven yards off you're going to be vulnerable to pitch patterns, little things like that, and they pick up seven, eight yards on first down. Here's Jones. Up the middle, very near first. Looked like he got a beneficial spot. And it will indeed move the chain, so a fresh set of downs for the Eagles. Now they're... Well, wait a minute, they picked it up and respotted it, and now we're going to have a little conference among the officials. <laughs> the one thing you're not last 49 of this ball game is Matt Nichols, the steely senior veteran. I mean, this is a guy under center, comfortable in those games. He's been in these situations. It was a four-year starter here at Eastern, and he's actually seen the Grizzlies lose here at Washington Grizzly Stadium, something not many people have seen because he was a red shirt in 2005, the last time the Eagles beat the Grizz, came over here and watched Eric Meyer beat the Grizzlies in that game, and so he said that was big. Was oh, big. sure, absolutely. That means a lot to have the confidence. You know, we always talk about it. Montana always seems to squeak out those games. You know, maybe they haven't played well, and it's uh, it's been... They slow starts and things like that. Montana knows how to win when it gets in, in close games. That's what the majority of their opponents. Eastern Washington also knows how to win and know. That's what makes this such a great and a great matchup today. Is you got veterans. They know how to win. They're not intimidated by that at all. And there's Nichols picking up the first down on the quarterback keeper on third and short. So that will move. Eastern now five for 12 on third downs on the day. Especially in big games like 40 for 309. This, when we started the pregame show, this is what was going to happen today. Turnover is going to change this game. We've got a great run right now, and it's come down to what we thought. Nichols again working out of the end back. 
backfield and again has Kaufman. Brandon Kaufman, the freshman out of Denver, Colorado, came into the day with just one catch on the year, but he has certainly emerged as a big time target here in the second half. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And again, we go back to Nichols accuracy. They are not a big run team in the middle of those tackles. We mentioned it all game. But when you have a, that's why they're not, because a guy like Nichols can make accurate throws on that outside. You know, if you're not comfortable with your quarterback, you're not going to throw those. Watch for the coverage to get a little bit tighter and tighter and tighter as they start to, to get these short gainers. Maybe Eastern Washington double moves them. Again. Immediately wrapped up by Mike McCord. And a near 20 completion to Boyce and a first down into Montana. Well, credit Eastern Washington's offensive line, Bryce Leahy on the on the left side there. That that blitz was picked up almost perfectly. Great view of it here. You got what they call a smash zone blitz to the field. That's two guys coming up. They're playing a cover three behind. It's a good blitz because it's not a dangerous blitz because you're playing a zone de defense behind him. But if you pick it up, you got tons of time for a guy like Nichols to stop it. Nichols the play action intended for downfield, but the flag comes in on the end of the play. Tremaine Johnson. The cornerback is shaken up in the end. So a double blow to the Grizzlies. Not only do they get the pass interference call, but their star cornerback, Tremaine Johnson, last year, freshman, led the team with four interceptions. He's got two picks so far this year, and he is still down in the end zone. Boy, that's tough. Tough call there, and the, the simple fact that these guys are fighting for the ball. The timing looked like they were there almost at the exact same time. The official clearly thought that Stoll had got there a little early. Yeah, that's boy, that's a pretty good call. Get another look at the really good look man. at it there. And I think actually meant it was on Trumaine Johnson. He appeared to be the one that had a hand just there. Quick, good call by the officials. And so the penalty, Montana's fifth of the game, sets the Eagles up with a first and 10 from the Grizzly 18. Once again, Nichols will work out of an empty backfield. Taiwan Jones. Split wide out to the very top of your screen. Davis, the man in motion, and fakes the throw, and Nichols right up the gut. Brought down by Sean Lebsock inside the 10. But 11 yards on the run will set up a first and goal for the Eagles. Nice play call and nicely executed. Huge hole there, you see, and then Nichols looks upfield to find his, find his blocker and goes and uses it and gets a first down. Quick drop for Nichols, slings it out to the outside, has Boyce, who's wrapped up immediately by Shan Schillinger at about the three-yard line. Five-yard gain for Boyce. You know, right there we saw it. They're giving him the cushion on the outside to let Nichols take those. And he'll take it every time he can get it. You know, as a quarterback, there's a lot of times you get out there, especially with a guy that's as veteran as this, who knows what he's doing. He'll just pick up and he'll throw that hitch if he's got the room to throw it, whether what play was called or not. So he's out there in command of his offense. We'll see if Montana tightens up their coverage. Eagles out of the eye from second and goal on the three. And Nichols tucks it, dives for the pylon, and is stopped just short inside the one. an Eastern player shaken up on the back side of the play. It's Boyce, and, and actually when he was making his cut in this route after the play action, 
I think Boyce caused himself a knee injury. It looks like he caught it and he went down really quickly. That'll be a big loss for Eastern Washington. Boy, he was an All-American receiver in 2007, over 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns through the air. Derek talked about the huge game he had here at Washington Grizzly Stadium in 2007. He's got six touchdown catches this year. That leads Eastern Washington, and as you said, John, they can ill afford to lose him. Yeah, that was a that was a, a very scary sight. Again, he was just kind of running a little whip route on top of the field where he comes inside and, and makes a plant with his leg and then is going to whip out, and he just went down immediately. Tough to see with such a valuable member of their football team. It just makes you sick, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does make you sick. That's a guy that knows that his career and game and, and season is likely over when he, a guy that serious or an injury that serious. You know, it's a the game. It's it's tough to to watch stuff like this with people that have devoted so much time and effort to the game. You saw the Sam Bradford earlier today. The same thing on a on a shoulder that he had let heal for weeks and weeks and, and falls on it and likely knows you know, he knew his Heisman bids were over when that happened and the game so much to these guys and, and they get to spend so much time and effort and, and sweat and then to have it taken away so quickly uh, we feel real bad for, for Boyce that's a tough break and so Nichols on third and goal tries the quarterback sneak and is stood up short of the goal line Wow. And so here that on initial. fourth and goal from the one, the Eagles will be without their senior captain on offense, Aaron Boyce, probably will be without him the rest of the game. Well, that was that was Sean Lebsock right there. The, the, the D lineman got low enough, but he met him right at that goal line and stood him up straight. Nice job, Sean Lebsock. On fourth down, it's Jones, and he's in. Touchdown, Eastern Washington. Well, nice job here. We all remember the fourth down that Eastern Washington did not convert on the other in the third quarter on the other side of the field, where they tried to throw the slant, and it didn't appear that they were comfortable running between the tackles. We kind of talked about it. We would have liked to see him you know, put a hat on a guy and, and get such a short half a yard yard. Nice job by the Eastern Washington line there, putting a hat on Montana, busting him into the end zone and scoring. Jones, 10th touchdown of the season. That leads the Big Sky Conference and Mike Jarrett tacks on the equalizer. A record crowd on hand here at Washington Grizzly Stadium to watch this. Well, is there any other way to put it? Instant classic between the Eagles and Grizzlies. Both teams ranked in the top 25 in the country. All tied up with under five minutes to play. First place in the conference up for grabs. Here's Javen Sembrano. Takes the short kick at the 20. Tries to get the corner and does. Another big return for the Grizzlies as Sembrano's forced out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Once again, the Montana offense takes over with a short field. Well, that short kickoff has not been helping Eastern Washington. They're catching the ball around the 20 and, and getting these corners and just starting with such good field position. That's just a, it's a tough nut to crack when you're, you know, when you got your back against the wall and you got an offense that's rolling to give this kind of field position makes it very difficult on your defense. Chase Reynolds gets the handoff on first down and surges for about four yards. And one thing we haven't talked about yet today, John, is the fact that the Eagles are without their starting middle linebacker this week, Kyle Wilkins senior out of Monroe, 
suspended by the Big Sky Conference for one game, and he's serving that suspension this week. It was the penalty was leveled for a uh, illegal hit on a defenseless wide receiver last week in Eastern's 31-13 loss to Weber State. Yeah, that's put the pressure on their on their linebacking core and their defense right there. You know the fact Renard Williams making a a big tackle in the backfield, forcing a third and long and a pretty quick turnaround for the Grizzlies. Not not making any headway here. Roper flushed out of the pocket and will run. Slides down and is stopped short of the first down marker in Eastern Territory. So fourth down coming up for the Grizzlies as we send it back down to Derek. Hey guys, well there's two big injuries at the end of that last series. Trumaine Johnson looks to be okay. He's running on the Grizz sidelines. The star cornerback looks like he's ready to come back in the game. On the other side, Aaron Boyce not putting any weight on his left leg. It looks like they're working on his high ankle area. They have him on the sidelines right now on the bench and he is not standing up and does not have his helmet with him. So it looks very doubtful that Boyce will return, guys. Could be a key loss for the Eagles as Kevin Clabo reels in the pass off the play action, forced out of bounds. Flags in on the end of the play, but there's also a penalty marker down way over on the other side of the field back at the 42 yard line. So we'll let the officials sort this one out before we get the call from Rich Rose. Here, regardless, uh, Coach Fennessy, really good call on fourth and two. Get Claybo in the backfield there uh, on what would look to be a blocking situation for Claybo. Slip the block and slide out in the, in the backfield and make a play and turn it up. start against the Grizzlies and a personal foul against Eastern. I think Eastern coaches are making the argument that the false start should be a dead ball foul. Illegal formation foul. on the offense. We'll go five yards back from the previous spot. We have a dead ball personal foul on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. It will be an automatic first down. So after a little uh, calculus by the officiating crew, Montana now set up with a first and 10 from what will be, as they pace it off, the Eastern Washington 37. Already getting close to Brody McKnight's field goal range. Roper to work out of the shotgun. Chase Reynolds flanking him to his right. And here's Reynolds over the left side. Little stutter step ridden out of bounds by Matt Johnson. Back at 32, a pickup of five. Pardon me. at a second and five, now under three minutes to play. Montana surely milking the clock, as you guys can see, as we climb under eight on the play clock. Both teams with all three of their timeouts remaining as Reynolds gets the handoff again. Breaks a tackle and is caught from behind. Johnson came up to make the shoestring tackle that saved a first down and maybe more. Coach Howe clearly comfortable with handing the ball off to Reynolds in these situations, as any coach would. Eastern Washington lucky there that that tripped up Reynolds, or this could have been a, <clears throat> a much bigger gain. Either way, a big third down for the Grizzlies here. Third and one from the Eastern 28. Eagles come on the blitz. Roper off the shotgun. Has Thaler. Breaks a tackle and stopped at the 10 yard line. Steven Thaler, the senior tight end out of Frenchtown. Keeps the drive alive for Montana. 
Not only a good catch by Faylor, but a great pass by Roper. Look at the accuracy of this. That has to be perfect. Puts it out right in front of him where he can get his big hands up on it. Does a nice job, actually, Faylor, when he gets back on the ground of switching that ball around to have it on the right side of his body. Roper looking really comfortable back there with a the little play action pass, a little rhythm. Eastern Washington had pressured on that situation. They don't appear to be pressuring down here. Look for Reynolds. Here is Reynolds. Tries the left side. Gets it inside the five. Stopped at the four by Tyler Washburn. Washburn's been all over the field today. The freshman linebacker, assumingly in for Wilkins, as we will take a break. Grizzlies knocking on the door here with just over a minute and a half to play. All tied up at 34. Inside two minutes to play here in Missoula, the Grizzlies Looking to punch it in, they have a second and four. A second and goal from the four, and this is Roper. Up the middle and stopped short of the goal line at about the one. And we were just handed a note up here in the booth. And apparently Aaron Boyce, the senior wideout for the Eagles, the leader, leads the team in touchdown catches. We saw him go down at the end of the Eagles' last drive. He is believed to have a ruptured Achilles tendon. And that's not official at this point, but that's what they think. And that's certainly not an injury you can come back from very quickly. No, it is. It's heartbreaking for somebody that's uh, done such wonderful things for a, a really good, solid program. And to see him suffer a, you know, what it, for all intents and purposes is, is for sure a season ending injury is, is difficult to see. Bo Baldwin takes a timeout, his second of the half. That stops the clock with a minute 27 left to play. The Eagles have one timeout remaining. The Grizzlies have all three of theirs. And so Montana certainly will want to get seven points out of this possession, especially the way the Eagles have been able to move the ball. Yeah, and this last quarter and a half, Eastern Washington has had their way with Montana and is really doing a nice job of picking up most everything that Montana is throwing at them. And Nichols is being accurate with his passes and obviously with the big play threats they have, they can move the ball in a hurry. Clearly Coach Baldwin's trying to preserve every second that he can to let him have a shot at the end. Chase Reynolds on the second effort is stopped inside the one. And so it brings up a fourth and goal for the Grizzlies. The Eagle take their third and final time out of the game to stop the clock with a minute 20 remaining. How big a stop was that for this Eagle defense? Nicely timed timeouts by Coach Baldwin. I mean, they have not been able to reel off any seconds here, any substantial seconds in this, basically what's been a goal line stand by Eastern Washington and, and being able to stop a guy like Chase Reynolds in that short time with an offensive lineman line like Montana has, really hats off to how they're playing and recognizing the seriousness of the situation. And if they do score, giving their offense the opportunity to have a little bit of something to work with. So here's the decision. Bobby Houck just sent Andrew Sell in to run at quarterback, so the Grizzlies will go for it here on fourth and goal from the one. Of course, Montana with an opportunity for a little chip shot field goal that would give them the lead. Instead, they're gonna go for the six. Sell under center, Reynolds the deep back. They give to Reynolds, and he's in. Second touchdown of the day for Chase Reynolds. Tenth of the season and one of the biggest of the year. And he just flat ran over Dante Calcote to get in there. Calcote, the junior out of Renton High School in Seattle, he had no chance. Well, we talked about it uh, at the beginning of this game. Downhill runner doesn't lose yards. Prime example of it there. Cody extra 
point is good, and a late flag comes in on the end of that play. But how about the guts on Bobby Houck to go for it on fourth and one? Well, I mean, go back and look at why he made the decision. You got a guy like Chase Reynolds to... Personal foul, roughing the kicker, number 10 on Eastern Washington. PAT was good, we're gonna kick off 15. So Matt Johnson flagged for the personal foul, roughing the kicker. To get another look at the touchdown, that means that the Grizzlies will kick off from midfield and will make this drive for Matt Nichols and the Eagles even harder and increasing the degree of difficulty even more, the fact that Nichols doesn't have his favorite target, Aaron Boyce. Yeah, that's actually a huge penalty. I mean, you look at the right there, Chase Reynolds, when he got the ball, almost looked like he was searching out somebody to hit on the goal line and, and bowled him over. But more importantly for Eastern Washington, I mean, they, they played it exactly how they wanted to play it down on the goal line, calling all their timeouts at the appropriate time and giving their offense a shot with over a minute left. But now with this, this penalty, it just makes it that much more difficult on something you didn't really even need. So that's got to be frustrating to, to Coach Baldwin in Eastern Washington right now. The simple fact that, I mean, look at this kicking off from the 45 yard line. There's a look at the MontanaGrizzlies.com scoring drive 11. Plays 55 yards in 3 minutes 35 seconds. Capped off by the one yard touchdown run by Chase Reynolds. It'll be interesting to see what Coach Houck has told his kicker to do here, whether he just blow it through the end zone and start on the 20 or uh, try to get the ball down here somewhere in the corners around the 10 and, and uh, run off some time. So the Eagles will get the ball back. A minute 18 to play. They trail by seven. As Brody McKnight's kick will sail out of the back of the end zone. So no time off the clock. Eastern takes over at their own 20. No timeouts remaining. And as we said, Matt Nichols without his top receiver down the field, Aaron Boyce. Yeah, they're still left with the number of, of playmakers here. It'll be really interesting to see where they put these guys and see what kind of matchups they try to get. I mean, you've got to think that they want to get Davis somewhere out there, get him matched up on somebody. And Jones, they got to get Jones the ball, uh, whether it be on handoff or get him on a swing or something. He's a guy that's got to touch the ball here in this last minute and 18 seconds. So this is it for Matt Nichols and the Eagles. All kinds of time to throw on first down and completes it to Edwards. 11 yard gain and a first down for the Eagles. Montana playing a cover to man. That's two safeties up top and man underneath. You look for big crossing routes around the middle. That's okay. Montana's willing to do that. Just simply. Ooh, big What's... miss right there by Nichols. He needed to make that throw. Montana got out of that cover two man and blitz from the field on that side. And that was a throw he wanted to have. Again, he was looking for Edwards, and Edwards had some separation, as you can see there, on Keith Thompson. But the throw was not on target. Brings up second and 10 now, 57 seconds on the clock. Again, Eastern, no timeouts. Again, good time for Nichols, and floats it in for the tight end over Bay. Stopped just short of midfield at the 48 yard line and Keith Thompson. The Grizzly corner shaking up on the play. And one thing we talked about early in the game John was the fact that both these teams last week in their games Montana against Cal Poly Eastern against Weber State both had five turnovers in that game. They wanted to correct it. Bobby Houck over the week said he's in the business of correcting, not accepting. And both teams have done that. Zero turnovers between the two teams here today, not counting stops on fourth down. No, you're absolutely right. And it took me a long time to realize that. 
uh, as a high school player and a college player, realizing how important those turnovers really are and what a disadvantage it gives you when you turn the ball over, particularly in bad field position. So, you know, Coach Houck harps on it. I'm sure Coach Baldwin harped on it this week. And you've seen the quarterbacks make really good decisions all day. And when there are opportunities, you see Nichols take a few chances here and there. But when there are risky opportunities, they're getting rid of the ball and not turning it over. Well, again, fans, we're going to wait to see how things shake out. As you never know, with 51 seconds left, but Coming up here very soon, we'll present our Northwestern Energy players of the game, Northwestern Energy delivering a bright future. Again, Keith Thompson, the senior cornerback out of Porterville, California, is the injured Grizzly. there yeah he might have had a tough hit to the head or something like that he doesn't look all that stable on his feet but it's good to see him get to the sidelines and walk off under his own power here we go Nichols got a chance to uh, to do what he wanted to do come over here and play against this crowd and this team Lops it up Again, was looking for Brandon Kaufman, but it's thrown incomplete. You can see there Nichols and Kaufman trying to run a little bit of a timing route on that, and Montana was able to get enough pressure in Nichols' face to force him just to throw it a hair early. And Kaufman hadn't turned around in time to see the ball, so really not a bad play. A few seconds off the clock. Nichols to the outside, nearly intercepted. Mike McCord, the safety out of Phoenix, Arizona, closed on that ball as soon as it was thrown. Couldn't reel it in, though, and it brings up third and 10. Watch Nichols stare this down. He was looking there the whole time, and just a beautiful break on the football. Nichols, got it. Nichols has to know that he's got to keep an eye on that safety just to hold him, just to make him stay there before you turn and throw that route. Brings up a third and 10. Nichols rolling. And he feels the heat. Gets rid of it. And it's ruled incomplete. Had his receiver. It's Edwards. Nick Edwards on the outside. And I believe Edwards actually made the grab, but he was out of bounds. And that brings up fourth and 10. It's down to this for the Eagles. That's been a good, that's a good play call. That's been a solid play for the Eagles all week or all day, excuse me, rolling, rolling Nichols out under pressure situations and giving him the field to work with it was a great play call, just not able to execute. Nice job by the Montana defense keeping tight coverage. Here's your ball game. Last chance for Eastern Washington, fourth and 10. And they dump it for Jones and he drops it. Incomplete. Montana takes over on downs and the Grizzlies will escape with another nail biter here in Missoula. For the second straight week, this Montana Grizzlies team ranked third in the country has been put to the test on their home field here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. And for the second straight week, the Grizzlies have come out on top. What an outstanding effort by both these ball clubs. This has, has been such an enjoyable game to watch because it's been played at an extremely high level. You, you watch two very good football teams with some very good football players. And all the players that were supposed to play big today on both sides of the ball did. And that, to me, that was what's so, so enjoyable. And so this one's in the books. The Grizzlies and Bobby Houck improved to 6-0 and on the season. They remain unbeaten. Eastern Washington now drops to 4-3 and overall, 3-2 and in the conference. Well, huge game for Montana from the aspect of that they know that going into this game, 
everybody else has one loss, you can stay undefeated in your conference and give yourself the, the lead walking out of this thing and leave it up to yourself to lose the conference rather than have to worry about everybody else. That's what's important about a victory like this, recognizing that you do have that ability and being able to execute it are two wholly different things. And the fact that you can recognize this is a big game for you to win and you got to win. The fact that they did, that means a lot. That means this team knows how to win in pressure situations. So Montana remains in first place in the Big Sky Conference standings. They are unbeaten at 6-0. and and next week, head out on the road to face a much improved Sacramento State Hornets team. Derek Berkeley again down on the field. He is, awaits Coach Howe. And while we wait, let's take a look at our Northwestern Energy players of the game for the Grizzlies, Chase Reynolds. Not a lot of production there on the ground, but the two key touchdowns gets him the award and then Kind of a no-brainer for Eastern Washington. Matt Nichols, the senior team captain. 32 completions, 312 yards, and three touchdowns through the air. All right, we're here with Coach Howe. Coach, what were you telling those Eastern Washington players after such a great game? Well, I was wishing them luck next week, obviously. They play uh, the neighbors. They're right. Tell me, uh, another very close game coming down to the wire. How are you holding up here with all these close games? Well, you know, we're playing good teams, and they're playing great football against us. And... Uh, you know, that's a credit to our kids. That's, that's an awfully good football team we just beat today. Fourth down and one tie game late in the game. Any question on that going forward at all? Uh, yeah, there is some question. I guess no one can, uh, I don't know if they did, but no one can confuse us with uh, people that don't have some courage. That's right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Coach. Right, Congrats on another win. Grizzlies pulling out another one by the skin of their teeth, guys. Well, thank you, Derek. I certainly don't think Bobby Houck will be uh, called a coward anytime soon after that fourth down call on fourth and one. Again, your final score in Missoula, 41-34. Montana remains unbeaten. Back to wrap things up right after the break. A battle right down to the final whistle between two top 25 teams in the football championship subdivision, third-ranked Montana. Comes out on top 41-34 to remain unbeaten on the season. And Grizz fans, don't forget to visit MontanaGrizzlies.com for complete post-game coverage, news, and statistics on all Grizzly athletics. John? Well, I just echo Coach Houck's comments. This was a great football team that came in here today, Eastern Washington, and I was thoroughly impressed how they just would never go away. And so many star athletes on that team and some really fun athletes to watch. And uh, Montana answered, and Montana, with their athletes of their own, came up with some huge plays. Well, the Grizz on the road next week at Sacramento State. We'll see you then a week from today. For John Edwards, Derek Berkeley, and the rest of our hardworking crew here in Missoula, thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Phil Buck, 41-34, your final score, Grizz, our 6-0. The Grizzly Gridiron Classics. Montana went on to dominate the regular season once again in 2009 as the Grizzlies finished undefeated before advancing all the way to the national championship game. 
UM fell to Villanova in the championship that year in what was ultimately Bobby Houck's final year at the helm during his first tenure as head coach. Thanks for tuning into this week's Grizzly Gridiron Classics. Next week, we jump to 2010 for a thriller in Missoula, where UM pulled out a late victory over Northern Arizona. See you then. Download our free app and take MTN Sports with you. Just search Montana Sports in the App Store or Google Play.